Drive, presented by Sumner One. Welcome to the opening drive on 101 ESPN in St. Louis. It's 7 o'clock. Your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. I'm going to look outside here. We're on the YouTube, by the way. So if you're watching on the YouTube and you see me looking to my left, you're right. Uh, I'm looking outside at the U.S. Bank and at Plaza Jaguar and Plaza Range Rover. And I'm just looking at the sky where there are no clouds. It's a beautiful day in St. Louis. Brooke Grimsley is here, Super Bowl champ Kerry Davis. I'm Randy Carricker and uh, traffic and weather together on the, uh, on the zeros on 101 ESPN. Uh, I, I want to give you the weather first because in St. Louis at the moment it is 56 degrees. It, copter two night. Oh no, that, I was doing the weather uh, first. Oh, okay. Weather first, first alert weather. All first right. first okay. alert weather here at 101 you ESPN. Yep, and there. On your on everybody's side. Yep. Yes. And now you can see me. Probably right now. Uh, I'm not going to give away the. For those of you that are watching, I'm not going to give away what the jet copter looks like. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> if you're on Olive and Creve Court, it is crystal clear. You can heck if you want to go 80 miles an hour, you can. <laughs> you shouldn't. 80 you miles shouldn't. an hour. No, do there's that. nobody out there. I'm, you just, I'm just looking down do at this that. road. There's nobody out there. So, uh, northbound, east, west, 270, all clear this morning. So, yeah, it's uh, put the pedal to the metal, folks. Get to work. Have fun. Oh, Enjoy. no. Enjoy. Please Enjoy. don't. If you, if you got a fast car, put it to work, baby. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't do that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so, yeah, go 55. Uh, unless you're on Olive and then go 80. Uh, uh -oh. I'm Captain Randy Garricker, 101 ESPN Jet Copter 2. <laughs> Traffic and weather together on the ones now. Um, 101 ESPN. Hey, Do you it's, uh, think that if someone gets pulled over and they're... Uh, <laughs> he just told me to go uh, 80. Uncle Randy said it was said fine. He said it was okay. <laughs> the, amount, the, the amount I wanted a car just at that moment as Randy turned just to speed down the road at like 100 miles <laughs> per hour. amazing. would have been amazing. <laughs> just going normal speed and all of a sudden as he's saying yeah. that just... Ooh, speed so, down. Right so, uh, yeah. I'm well aware of the fact that... Uh, our friends, the Creve Corps police officers, are listening, and so I will point out that that was just a joke. Just a JK. It was. <laughs> That's how you save it. yourself legally <laughs> in that situation. So I, I've been JKing about the Cardinals for about April, May, June, July, August, uh, because they're really, really good. Uh, you know, I, I was just joking about the fact that uh, they were not playing well. Because they've been playing well, they just haven't been able to come out on top in games. But boy, now you look at the Cardinals and you just think, oh, October's going to be amazing. Uh, CD, I'll let you take this one. What, why, don't you, why don't you break his heart on this one? It's to walk off wins. It's, it's, it's nice. It feels warm and fuzzy. It's like a, a pumpkin spice latte. It oh, feels yes. good, right? Mm -hmm. It feels wonderful, warm and fuzzy. Mm -hmm. uh, but eventually your drink ends and you have to go back to regular life. <laughs> <laughs> Reality hits Darn you. It. Smack in the okay. face. Well, yesterday, Miles Michaelis uh, went six innings and he gave three runs. It was a quality start for Miles. The Cardinals did allow a run in the first, and you're thinking, uh-oh, here we go. And then they uh, allowed a base hit by Kim to uh, score Matt Carpenter to make it 2-0 in the second. Then they scored another in the second on a base hit by Juan Soto. And it's 3 nothing heading into the fourth inning with Wilson Contreras aboard. Uh, the only W-I-L-L-S-O-N in uh, Major League Baseball history, by the way. <laughs> nice. And Nolan Arenado is also aboard for one of the Cardinals' prized rookies. Mostly outdoor activities I was thinking of. Swing and a drive. Oh, baby, look at that one go. Pass, Big Mac Clan. Onto the concourse. That is Jordan Walker with a 431-foot blast. The call from Chip Carey on Valley Sports. Cardinals tied the game at three apiece. Soto singles one home in the seventh, so we go to the ninth inning. And the Cardinals are in deep, deep doo-doo. So uh, you're, you're in the bottom of the ninth against Josh Hader. And uh, Motter, this just doesn't happen, but Taylor Motter, Motter struck out. Uh, <laughs> you're saying yeah. that's a rare occurrence? Yeah, it is. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Then uh, Lucan, totally. Lucan Baker steps to the plate. And uh, what's he do? Uh, he flies out to center. So you got two outs. Mm -hmm. uh, Mason Wynn steps to the plate. Strike one, strike two. And on a two-strike pitch, Mason Wynn doubles to left. So you got a chance. But Tommy Edmonds not a home run hitter. He can't. All he can do is tie the game for you, right? But you're hoping to get extra innings again with Tommy uh, Two Bags Edmond. Driven to right. Well hit. Tatis back. It is gone. It is gone. The Cardinals have won it. Tommy Four Bags. There you go. Oh, Tommy how about Edmund. that? Tommy Ed Edmond. Oh. Oh, right, I thought we were going to keep going because he's yeah, telling yeah. me two bags. Oh, yeah. You got to do it twice. Okay, let's go, go ahead. Set it up. 
Tommy Edmond. Perfect. This is this is exciting, guys. Awesome. This is exciting baseball right now. Wish it would have happened a little bit earlier. That would have been nice. Yeah. That would have been nice. Yeah, yeah. but. but you know. You can't. You, beggars can't be choosers. We'll take wins. <laughs> there you go. I was going to say, I tried to hold it back. Yeah. Beggars can't be choosers. Yeah. A win's a win. A yeah. win's a win is a win. Skipper <laughs> Ali Marmol, how fun is this? I love the ending of the last two games. Um, it's a heck of a lot of fun. And uh, the boys are enjoying it. There's some life in there. They've been competing hard. It hasn't gone our way. But uh, the last two nights, that was uh, a lot of fun. Oh, it has been fun. really fun. <laughs> really good. It is. To have that winning feeling. The drama. Man. The to drama. be able to, yeah. to pull a victory out. Yeah. Out of out of nowhere, out of thin air. Out of the, oh. the, the jaws of defeat. Oh man. Oh. Hey, Tony Lewis used to say it, <laughs> and Tommy Edmund agrees. All you want every single day is a hard nine. Yeah, no, we're, I mean, we're just still fighting, you know? I mean, these games are uh, important in that we can carry this momentum over, and um, we're really just doing a good job, I think, of, of uh, not letting the overall season impact us too much. So we're just going to continue to keep doing that and hopefully have a good September. Great job. Thanks for the chat. Thank you, Jim. There's Jimmy the Cat Hayes on Valley Sports. Very nice. Tommy Edmond, I, of course, you're super excited for him, but can we talk about the young guys and Jordan Walker and Mason Wynn and how J-Dub. big that they've been in these two victories? That's something that has really stood out to me is is Jordan Walker and Mason Wynn and what they've been able to do. You had win where the game before he had run saving play and then he was able to hit the double to extend the game last night. I think that says a lot. Did you guys see in the post game too that win because Jordan Walker went four for four yesterday that win borrowed Jordan Walker's back because he's like he was like, hey, something's working here. Let me try that out. <laughs> and that's what led to that double. Really? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I just think those are cool stories. Yeah. You love the personalities, the friendships that are being built, and also the camaraderie that's being built. But having Walker and Wynn really kind of hit their stride. And look, they're, of course, going to go through lulls. They're young guys. But for them to be big and essential in these past two wins, I think is something that is really exciting to see. Yeah, you're going to. Okay. Oh, yeah. yes. yes. You're going to have your. Uh... Rock thought something went off over there. He, he had a he sheer pain. <laughs> went through him. His fear level just reached 100. <laughs> he was like, something's going on. What button hit? What did I, what did I, what did I do? What did I do? The thing you have to, uh, you, you hit it, Brooke. The, those two young guys growing up, mm-hmm. uh, learning the game together, playing together. The fact that they weren't friends when they first started competing against each other. Now they're really, really good friends. Um, they're going to have their mistakes. Jordan Walker had yeah. a couple of nights ago had the, the error on the bases where he was not dialed in and got picked off. But those things are going to happen. But you're going to see the the plays that they make, the big plays, the big mm-hmm. hits, the doubles, the home runs, throwing guys out from right field, saving a run by, by diving and, and making a play on the infield uh, by Mason Wynn. Those are the things that that come with being young superstars. And the older that they get in the game, the more reps that they get, the less times you'll see them mess up. And so yeah. you kind of have to take the good with the bad. But right now, we're really enjoying the good part of what they're doing. Yeah, it, it's just good and exciting to see. And, you know, it's it's nice that they've had these two wins. The Padres, I think, honestly, the Padres season is definitely up there and being one of the most disappointing ones. I think they win over the Mets because yeah. they kept everybody. And then they, they, bu- they bought into what they had, and they tried, they thought – at the trade deadline, when they got Rich Hill, who started yesterday, they thought that they were going to be able to go for it, and they've been terrible ever since the deadline. So, hey, hey, I think hey. they're the biggest disappointment. Good. <laughs> it's, I, at least I we've gotten this. Bad for them. <laughs> so, uh, there you have the Cardinals, and they're off today. We do have football tonight here in St. Louis. Lindenwood will be in action, and Mizzou will start their season. Uh, the Tigers and Eli Drinkwitz will take on South Dakota at Furrow Field. Drink has a new offensive coordinator in Kirby Moore. So what's he going to do now that he's not calling plays anymore? Yeah, I'm, I was going to see if they'd let me just go sit in the suite and, uh, you know, have popcorn and hang out and then take questions at halftime. But that's not exactly how it's going to go. So I don't anticipate it'll be any different than it was the last four or five games or three or four games when I let Coach Hamden call it um, last year. I think it'll be very similar. Um, 
I'm more involved in special teams than I've ever been, so I, I'm excited about that aspect of it. But I'm still involved a lot in the day-to-day -day operations of the offense and and uh, and defense, and so I'll be on the headsets, communicating and making sure that we're ready for any situation that pops up. And Mizzou coming back with eight defensive starters. Their defense should be very good. And they'll share the quarterback position. By the way, a new offensive line coach, as Howard Richards mentioned yesterday, a different look offensive line, which they need. And Brady Cook and Sam Horn will share the quarterback duties. Well, I think CD said it best. What was that last week where you said, if you have two quarterbacks? You got none. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, I think... Uh, Cook did a pretty good job last year. I thought he did a decent job. You got Sam Horn. You got a guy that two-sport athlete, a really good athlete, a guy that they believe has the potential to be good at this level. We talked about it yesterday. Dominic Lovett leaving, going mm -hmm. to Georgia, is going to be a huge loss for them. Can Luther Burden step up in that slot position and make those plays really uh, transform his game from a high school wide receiver to a collegiate wide receiver, run the plays, run the routes correctly, run them at the right depth, catch the ball. He, we know he's a playmaker, so you're going to want to get the ball in his hands as often as possible. Uh, but is he able to do those things that they need to get done? Defensively, I think they should be sound. But what are they going to be able to do offensively mm -hmm. with this two quarterback, potentially two quarterback system? How, how is that going to flow? So they start tonight and uh, Lindenwood opens their season tonight as well over at Hunter Stadium on the campus of Lindenwood University. They take on Wisconsin Stevens Point. Lindenwood, their second year in D1. And that's a seven o'clock game over at Lindenwood. So we are often, oh, you, I forgot St. Louis City SC. They you beat Dallas last night too. So how can I forget about that? Yes. Go, go SD. Uh, yeah. Dallas gets a red card early when their goalkeeper gets a handball nice. outside the box. You just can't do that. It's illegal. Uh, and then uh, proceeded to park the bus for the rest of the game, as it were. Uh, City finally broke through in the 82nd minute as newcomer Anthony Markanik scored his first career MLS goal. Fellow newcomer in substitute four made it 2-0 in the fifth. And then uh, uh, City wound up winning by a score of 2-1, getting back on the winning track last night over Dallas. Much deserved three points for City SC. You mentioned Markanik and then also Thor. Mm -hmm. Thor getting his goal, I think, was Look huge. Key. But the way that it was set up in those, you had the cross by Alm that set up the Markanic goal, and then you had Leuven and Santa Claus. I tweeted out Santa Claus gifting Thor that goal <laughs> last well night. Done. It's just, it's too easy. Too but easy, yeah. you see how essential Klaus and Leuven are, especially Leuven, how he has just been kind of a steady force to pace this offense. Also, respect to the supporters section for showing, you don't have to be clever when you have like a good base for a chant. Mm -hmm. Because when Klaus came on, they just broke out and Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah. They didn't change I it. it. Like, I think they changed yeah. some of the verses and got Klaus a little clever with it. But the fact that you just hit just hit a classic that everyone it. knows, it's easy, it, it works. Yep. They went oh, they went crazy when they showed him take off his warm-up shirt That's on the video screen. Fantastic. The all 22,000 just erupted when they saw that. That's it so great. cool. And it is so difficult. We all know how difficult it is to find a reliable mechanic. So uh, the, the, <laughs> fact that, uh, the, fact, the fact that we have one here in St. Louis. <laughs> and, and I texted you guys in the group chat. We'll play the audio a little bit later. A very anti- uh a Colorado yeah, Rapids, Colorado therefore Stan Kroenke, Mark Hannick. So how about I that? Love, love that. It, love it. Coming Good. up next on 101 ESPN, Brooke has a very interesting sick of it, and you should have one too because you got to be sick of something, right? 314-399-9646, 314-399-YOHO. Sick of it next on 101 ESPN.
Carrie, Randy, Matthew, we need your text 314-399-9646-314-399. Yo-ho! Yo for sick of it. And uh, Brooke, when are you going to start it? Okay. Well, yesterday, guys, uh, I know this might be shocking, but I was out shopping mm. yesterday because I needed to get a wedding guest dress for this weekend, uh, going to a wedding, David and I. And so I went over to Nordstrom Rack, looked around a lot of different places, but ended up at Nordstrom Rack um, at one point. And I'm just shopping, da -da -da -da, looking at clothes. And then this woman comes over to me with two little kids, okay? And she was like, do you speak English? And I was like, yes, I do. And she holds up a little sign that's asking for money. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm actually, I have like a gift card. You know, I'm just using that. I'm sorry. I don't play. I, yeah, I, I don't have any cash on me, which I never do anyways. Mm -hmm. And then she said, oh, she had a bunch of clothes in her cart. She was like, oh, well, can you pay for their clothes then, these clothes for my kids? And her little kids are just looking mm -hmm. up at me. And I was like, uh... Um, I mean, why, why don't we see if there's somebody, you know, up at the front that can help? And she's like, oh, no, no. And then scurries off. So that's what I'm sick of. You know, I, I understand. Scam. Scammers. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, adults asking for money, that's fine. But when you involve your kids yeah. in it, you guys have seen that. You know, on over on the side of the street, there would be an adult, maybe with their kids, who, whoever kid it is, and they're asking for money. I absolutely hate seeing that. Why involve your kids in right. that? It's so painful. And putting them in such, like, an awkward pos position like that. It's, it's uh. It's unfortunate and it's unfair, and you know it's not. Uh, it's not really nice for, it's for not the being, children. No, no. Not good. well, and obviously not being a good parent, but just getting your kids involved in that is just painful. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm sick of. What? I'm sick of the Hazelwood School District. Mm -hmm. This is the second week in a row that I have had a conversation with potentially not playing a game. Last week, I was told by an assistant superintendent that we couldn't play. We, our field is not done at Hazelwood Central. Hazelwood West field is done. We are the home team playing Parkway West this weekend. And I was told that we cannot play at Hazelwood West for no particular reason. Eventually, we got it figured out. I was even told if we had to forfeit week two, eh, eh, sounds like a you problem, not a me problem, from this superintendent, assistant superintendent. Wow. Then I was told yesterday, we have our field is, is projected to be completed uh, September-ish. We play Ladue August, I'm sorry, October 6th. I was told that we, which is a Friday night, mm -hmm. first Friday night game ever in Hazelwood Central history. Allegedly. 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 I was told <laughs> last, yesterday after practice, yeah, we had to move your game, your Friday night game to Saturday because Hazelwood West has a Friday night game. Mm -hmm. eh, I don't think that's how that works. No. There was a bill that was passed, Proposition H, which allowed all Hazelwood high schools to get lights, turf, which meant that all Hazelwood high schools would have Friday night games. Mm. That was the purpose of the bill. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of that. I'm sick of them. I'm sick of all of it. I am at my wit's end. I don't want to hear it. I don't care. I don't care what they have to say. I'm frustrated. It's not right. It's not fair to the kids. My kids have worked their butt off. And for a person in authority to tell me, the head coach, that my team can forfeit, man, I think that's nuts. That's, I'm sick of that. Uh, I, that is absurd. I am too. I, 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 am, I am proxy sick of it for yeah. you. It's ridiculous. And yeah. and those people, that person particularly, he should be ashamed of himself. And that, and how do you explain that to your players? Because oh, I'm, I'm sure that, that they were looking kids. for it. That's not yeah. happening. Yeah. That, that won't happen. Yeah. yeah they, they, they better figure it out. Uh, guys, we have a new rule in the 101 ESPN Fantasy League that you have a two quarterback set up. I'm already sick of it. We haven't even played a game. I'm it's already a, sick of it. It's a tough <laughs> battle, man. It is. It's not great. No. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough if Jordan Love isn't good. Here's the problem, and I, 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 that's why I was not in a rush to go get another quarterback. I've been in two quarterback leagues. Mm -hmm. It's never as fruitful as you think. Nope. One would think, oh, I can get Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes, and I'm going to score 80 points just with those. It's not going to happen that way. It never will. It, it it averages itself out. And so, yeah. yeah I'm kind of Caution. disappointed. Buyer beware. Yeah, if, you, if you went out and got two quarterbacks, one of them's going to stink. Sorry. You tell me Sam Howell's not going to light it no, up? No, Sam Howell is. But, well, he got Eric B in me, maybe. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't feel great about a lot of that, too. 14 person league. And then also yeah, the two was, quarterbacks. I was like, oh, yeah, man. That what? was tough. What do you have to say? That first point you Taking made my felt, Derrick Henry. That first point you made felt a little pointed. I don't it know was, why. It was, so it was, out the 14 oh, somebody, oh you know what? Wait, you know what else league. I'm sick of? People hmm. waiting last minute to join fantasy football leagues. Oh, that's the worst. Uh, Who would do that? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Action Jackson, what a guy. <laughs> you do that. Yeah, throw That's him crazy. Under the bus, huh? All right. Uh, uh, can I give one more before you give your uh, the, the text? And the text line is open. And you can watch this, by the way, on the YouTube. Uh, I am so sick of negativity surrounding Cardinal baseball. You know, Cardinals have one of the preeminent young uh, left-handed hitting, right-handed throwing players, maybe in the history of the game, in Richie Palacios, <laughs> who has arrived on the scene. And so I come in this morning and I say, uh, hey, uh, hey, Matthew, you, you think Palacios right there with Johnny Mai, Zena Slaughter, maybe Jim Edmonds? No, no, just totally negative. He did, come on, Richie Palacios is showing us something here. Let's give the young man an opportunity. How, how, many, okay. how many games? Eh, it doesn't matter. Uh, I, I test. I test. The, I, 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 uh, I say test. It, I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're showing me. You guys, you guys seem to be. Uh, I'm not getting any response. You, think, you are not supporting me. You appear to be supporting uh, Matthew here. Well, he's got 30 at bats, yeah. Randy. Yeah. He, he, he's got nine hits in those. He's hitting 300. That's, that's, that's good. It's okay. It's okay. It's, he's better than Johnny Mize. No. You said he was the best left handed hitting, right handed throwing player in Cardinal history. Yeah. We, 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 and he's the best on the okay. team. Who's hey, best on the team? Nolan Gorman. He's in 230. <laughs> Gorman's in 230. Richie Palacios is a 300 hitter. Well, here's the thing. Cardinal I, career. Well, now, I did find one that I, I, I know you're going to agree with Ooh. Chris Duncan. Okay, yeah, Duncan's there you better. go. Duncan's better. Okay, got it. I'm just gonna say preview the 8 a.m. segment. You call the White Sox. Who they say? Who do, who do they want first, Gorman or Palacios? Palacios. No way. The broadcasting cool. talent to say that with a straight face, Randy character, <laughs> impressive. Richie, 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 oh. Richie. Okay. Go, what, what do you got on the next line? Sick of these people who do not get up to the speed limit on interstate ramps before they merge into yes. traffic. Pick up the pace, Margaret. I told yes. you on the traffic report, and these guys said, no, don't speed. So what do we what, what do we want? I, well, you know, this is a little bit different framing of it. I think it is frustrating when somebody just kind of slowly comes in, okay. you know? Okay. You're just waiting. You're like, are you going to speed I, up a wee bit? I still haven't Slow. seen anybody going 80 on all of this. There's too many cars out there now. Yeah, there are now. Let's, yeah. not, let's not do that. This is an incredibly niche one, but I'm going to read it anyway. I'm sick of Carrie Underwood opening for Guns N' Roses everywhere but St. Louis. We get oh. the Pretenders? Really? Pretenders are a fantastic opening act. But, I had yeah. no idea that that was happening, that Carrie Underwood was opening for Guns N' Roses. I had no idea either. I were going to say, I'm tired of Carrie Underwood opening for Sunday Night Football. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I like that song. I do too. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? Yeah, but I'm on board with that. I think she should appear in St. Louis, but she's a Predators fan. And, well, because uh, her husband was a Predators yeah, player. Well, and the Predators we lost like their Stanley Cup final. So. Yeah, they but did. they hung that banner for winning a division that one yeah, time. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> they got that going for them, which is nice. <laughs> Sick of it. Sick of radio stations stressing that they want listeners to participate, and they ask them to text in, and then they talk and joke all through the segment that they were supposed to read text messages, so they only have time for one, maybe, maybe two texts. You're the third, so there you go. Oh, sorry. Happy. Proud of you. You yeah. got on there. Good. Yeah, now I you guess can, re- we'll you can go pause. to the podcast and replay that for everyone <laughs> and show them your text and yep. show them and let them listen to the fact that we and how read many texts your text. we've read and, so and while, far. I feel like we've read a couple of them. Yeah. While we're More talking about two. text, I do want to say the best way to get your text read is obviously if it hasn't gotten read yet, just copy uh, and paste it and then just send it over and over yeah, and over that. again because that, that definitely that, that raises the that chances we're going to read it. Definitely will get rock to scroll right past your text. He is setting you up for failure, yes, sir, ma'am. Once getting read. More in here. <laughs> I'm sick of my wife not liking my mustache. I shaved my beard to the, to the stash, and now she thinks I'm mad at her. I think I look good. Okay, Brooke, you're the one that has to take this one. Oh, uh, I don't. I don't know. I it's, can't grow a beard or a mustache, so it's, no, uh, really? I, I'm not. I'm, I'm, either I think it really? depends. Yeah. You Baby can't face. force it, obviously. Yeah. I, I've had it go either way. since I was like 16. <laughs> <laughs> like this? Like a full yeah, beard no, like, this? like this? Oh, I, okay. I, I could have. I just uh, yeah. didn't let it grow out. Yeah. yeah. I think it depends on certain people. Like some people, I think the beard elevates. Like I think of James Harden. Like he, yeah, the, beard the beard is very important and essential. Right. And then I, mustaches are cool. But some people don't like them. Yeah. So it it, it depends. It depends on, it's your style. It's, yeah. it's whatever works. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so if your wife doesn't like it, then you shouldn't like it. 
That would happen in my house. My Is dad, that how that works? Yeah. <laughs> my dad would just like. You didn't get that memo? <laughs> my dad would just be like, I feel like shaving my mustache off. My mom would be like, did I, what, what did I, why are you mad at me? And he's just like, no, I just felt like shaving it off. And just, <laughs> it was never a decision that went over well. All right, one more. We've got Jed Stugart from Lindenwood coming up at the bottom of the hour here. Sick of fans calling or texting and saying that Mo is cheap and is not going to spend money. Spending doesn't win games and Mo doesn't control the money. Well, number one, that is patently wrong. Didn't the Padres win like their 83rd and 84th games this week against St. Louis and 85th as they swept the Cardinals? Padres had the second highest payroll in the National League, did they not? And So I think your premise is wrong off the bat because when you spend a lot of money, ergo, your team wins, i.e. the Yankees basically winning every year. Uh, or the Dodgers winning the World Series every year. To say that spending money does not equate to victories is wrong, incorrect, and I'm ashamed of you for sending that text in. Randy, I've always said the 40 World Series championships by the Yankees are just never going to be caught up by anybody else. I don't think so, no. And then when you see, like, the Atlanta Braves uh, win the World Series, because they had the highest payroll a couple of years ago, uh, there's just no doubt. When you see the, the Tampa Bay Rays make it to the World Series in 2020, there's no doubt they did that because they spent a lot of money. So I, I just wish, for your sake, that you had not embarrassed yourself by sending that text in to us. <laughs> because it really is all about spending money. Look at the New York Mets. It's going to be an epic World Series this year oh, between yeah. the Yankees and the Mets. Can't wait I, to see that one. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're going to be in the World Series. The Yankees and Mets aren't going to be. I don't, I don't think they're going <laughs> to. But Kerry, the they're one yeah, in they three. Of, in, they're yeah, one in three in payroll. Kerry. Yeah, I know they did, but I don't, I don't think they're going to be. That's there. not how that works. I don't think they might not make the playoffs. I don't okay. think they're going to make it. Oh, oh. You got to make the playoffs to make a to win a World Championship. Damn it! All right, you're saying. Right? Okay. The more you know. <laughs> 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 Gary, you gotta, you gotta do the more you know. You gotta do the story. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yes, that's perfect. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> Coming up next, Lindenwood starts their season tonight at Hunter Stadium. Looking forward to the Lions as uh, they'll get things rolling against Wisconsin Stevens Point. And the head coach of Lindenwood, Jed Stugart, one of our favorite people, is going to join us next on 101 ESPN.
This is Rocky with your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Cardinals yesterday pull off a series win over the San Diego Padres with a back to back walk off win by Tommy Edmond. This time he hits a two run, two out home run to give the Cardinals the win in the series. They will be off today. They finish the month of August 11 and 16. They will start up September on Friday with a three game series against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Game one will have first pitch at 7 15. Also last night, St. Louis City SC gets back into the win column with a 2-1 victory over Dallas FC. Dallas FC got a red card early down to 10 men in the 25th minute and then took about 50 minutes for STL City SC to finally score a goal. And it was newcomer Anthony Markanich who scored his first career MLS goal, followed by newcomer and also getting his first career MLS goal, Nook V. Thorison, for a 2-1 victory. That is your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff. Find new roads and stop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? Grimsley, Kerry Davis, Randy Carricker, and St. Louis's Division I football team, the Lindenwood Lions, open up their season against Wisconsin Stevens Point tonight at Hunter Stadium, the second year in Division I for the uh, Lindenwood Lions and their head coach, Jed Stewart, joins us here on 101 ESPN, and he'll join us every uh, weekend, every Friday before games, but with the Thursday game, Jed's going to join us on Thursday morning today. Coach, good morning. How are you doing? Hey, good morning, y'all. It's a great day to be a Lion, game day. <laughs> Coach, how, how excited are you? I know you put in a lot of work in the summertime preparing your kids. How excited are you for this first game to really get an opportunity to go against another opposing team? Well, as you know, you've been through all of those camps that carry. It's like uh, it's just time to hit somebody else. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, and uh, you know it seems so long and and uh, you know and and like you like you just said, you know, the season preseason it really starts in 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 the winter time. You know, in the weight room, and then you know you get into spring ball and. And then uh, the summer workout program, and then next thing you know, you got twenty some practices, and and before you play somebody, so everybody's chomping at the bit, and it's just so exciting. I can't wait, you know, home home opener and and uh, the tailgating going on. I mean, that's such a fun atmosphere, and our kids love walking down through the tailgate after our pregame pregame meal, and it's just uh, it's it's here, it's exciting. I know our guys are really fired up about it. So, Coach, tell us about your new quarterback at the helm and Cole Duggar. I know that it's always hard to part with somebody like Cade Brister. It sounds like he was a big part, essentially, of what you guys had going on. But what is your excitement level with seeing Cole Duggar take the helm? Well, Cole's a uh, – I've been really excited about Cole. I mean, it's one of those things because he's been here, and, you know, it's one of those things. I've been in situations where you've graduated a quarterback and then you had uh, – you know, you didn't have any experience. And you had, uh, in fact, even had – in my past, I've had to have, you know, a true freshman starting quarterback and, and just start from the ground zero. And uh, But Cole, you know, has been here. Um, Cole's played for us. I think the moment that – I remember when Cade went down with a broken leg in his, what is, uh, junior year a couple of years ago. And and uh, in a key part of the game, um, Cole came in, uh, cool as a cucumber, and, uh, you know, his very first throw as a college quarterback, he threw a back shoulder strike in the back corner of the end zone to Peyton Rose for a touchdown that sealed the win. I mean, in this, on his very first throw in college and, you know, our team just kind of went nuts and, and you could see right there that uh, this was a stage he belonged in. And so, you know, he's played. So the respect, I think that's why he, he, even though he's not played a lot, he feels like a veteran. The guys look at him like that and, and him, there's some similarities to him and Cade, but there's very much a lot of differences and, uh, you know, and, you know, so it's I'm like I'm really excited. This is Cole's time, and I told him that the other day. I just smiled at him at practice and said, "Man, it's your time," and and it's really exciting. Coach Wisconsin Stevens Point coming in tonight. How difficult is it preparing for that first game when you don't have much film? You got film from last year, but obviously rosters yeah. turn over. How difficult is it preparing for that first game? It really is. You know, um, it kind of makes it a little bit fun, and it, you know, luckily, um, you know, some in some cases. You know, you, you play games where, you know, they have film on you. Maybe you played one game and they haven't yet. And, and uh, But in this case, you know, it's kind of cool because we both, uh, this is both our first games. But, you know, it makes it a little exciting. But, you know, you kind of have to go, you know, uh, hoping that they kind of haven't completely changed their whole offense or their, their complete defense. But, yeah, just off of last year's film. But it kind of makes it a little fun the first quarter or at least the first couple drives um, to really kind of say, okay, what, uh, you know, 
what are they doing here or, or what kind of personnel you know we kind of when we got the two deep we did notice you know there's a lot of different uh, names that weren't there last year so you never know at the transfer portal um, you know you're seeing completely new people and so but the kind of makes it kind of fun exciting Ted Stewart, the head coach of Lindenwood, with us on 101 ESPN. The Lions playing tonight at home against Wisconsin Stevens Point, and you can head on over to Hunter Stadium for that 7 o'clock game. You mentioned the transfer portal. I want you to give everybody the statistic about Lindenwood in the transfer portal during this past off season. Well, you know, we were really, uh, really blessed to, to uh, you know, at the end of the season, and uh, we, we kind of saw this tweet going around by this guy that, you know, this, that this uh, Twitter uh, that does uh, – tracks FCS division one football. And I, I started seeing that we were in a list of, uh, you know, teams that hadn't uh, had anybody go in the portal yet. And then by the end of that, um, you know, we, we were the, the, the one team uh, that didn't have one person go in the transfer portal. And it was one of those things where it just, it was a great, um, this says a lot about our coaches, um, our coaching staff and just how well they treat our guys and, and it feel, you know, and then, uh, you know, now that's going to happen. We know you, you know, that's just part of the game today. And, and since, you know, after spring ball and things like that, you know, we've had to help some guys get on to other places, you know, because of that, you know, moving up to division one, you know, some guys, you know, we needed to get somewhere where they can play a little more. So I think we've only had two or three that have even left. And so I'm really proud of our program, proud of our, our coaches. Um, and, uh, because it, you know, this transfer portal, it's in the game. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it so brings a whole different uh, deal to the recruiting, you know, either, either high school or you're going to recruit off a transfer portal. And, and uh, you know, we're still kind of old-fashioned high school recruiters right now. We, we, we will fill in some cracks with the transfer portal, but, you know, we really believe in high school recruiting and development, and uh, especially when you live in uh, St. Louis and the talent here, we're going to be loyal to the Lou and, and, uh, and recruit uh, our backyard, and that's what we've uh, – and we've got good things going right now with uh, this class. Of commitments that are right right close to home so it's pretty exciting and uh, coach one last thing greg amzinger is coming into town he's in the air right now coming to the game uh, i will be at the game tonight and we hope there's a big crowd but a lot of great things happening with tailgating at lindenwood it is beyond the football a really fun atmosphere absolutely and we love when the lindenwood mafia comes back to the <laughs> uh comes back to the uh to the to the loo man and uh so i know got a text from greg and and uh, that's so cool uh, we love having you guys around. The atmosphere is going to be awesome. Like I said, tailgating kicks off early. The game kicks off at 7. And uh, and uh, just, again, the campus is buzzing. The community is buzzing. And, and uh, can't wait to kick it off tonight. Coach, good luck tonight. Have a great season. Thanks so much for the time. And we'll talk to you next week. But we'll see you tonight at the game. God bless y'all. Appreciate you having us on. Thanks, Jed. Jed Stewart, he's the head coach at Lindenwood, St. Louis's Division One football team. And, of course, you can get over there tonight at 7. It's fun football, and they, they've got nine 300-pounders. You, you have to change things when you move, make that move from D2 to D1. They're bigger, they're more athletic, and he and his staff really are good. Yeah, it, it, I mean, everything starts up front. When you get big guys that can move and move people against their will, you have a chance to be successful. The skill guys, we love them, but it's all about the big fellas up front. Yeah, and for Linwood, that's always tough, going from D2 to D1, and for them to be able to do that transition last year and seemingly everything go off without a hitch, I think that says a lot about the organization and with Jed just about how he was able to get those guys to really buy in early on and continue to build off that. That strong foundation is huge when making that big leap. Yeah, it's amazing to think about. They're the only school in America to not have a player enter the transfer portal. Wow. That's pretty amazing. That is yeah. amazing. Pretty cool. It is. Uh, and, and by the way, as I can tell you, great education, Linda Wood, too. Uh, mm. You can attest to that, huh? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Coming up, get your text into the Air Comfort Service. Text line 314-399-9646. 314-399-9646. Take it or leave it. Coming your way on 101 ESPN.
it or leave it. Want to say something? We'll put it out there. If you like it, you can take it. If you don't, send it right back. Get your text in to 314-399-9646. And give us your take it or leave it. Brought to you by Gloria Lou Realty. Visit GloriaHasTheBuyers.com and start packing. That's my final author. Take it or leave it. With Brooke Grimsley and Carrie Davis and Matthew Rocchio, I'm Randy Carricker. Time for Tioli on 101 ESPN. Guys, Terry McDonough, former member of the Arizona Cardinals front office, filed a lawsuit against the Cardinals alleging a lot of uh, nefarious activity on the part of ownership. And one of the things that Terry McDonough claimed was that Michael Bidwill told he and former head coach Steve Wilkes to use burner phones to communicate with f- former GM Steve Keim while Keim was under suspension for an extreme DUI in Arizona. Arizona. Steve Wilkes, under oath on the stand, confirmed that Michael Bidwill asked oh, yeah. he and McDonough to use burner phones. Oh, Obviously, yeah. they fired Steve Wilkes after a year. They traded, uh, uh, actually cut a quarterback that they had drafted 10th the year before so that they could go in uh, all in on Kyler Murray and uh, his Kingsbury. college head coach. And uh, they wound up firing that coach last year. And now they have cut their starting quarterback. Uh, Colt McCoy, and they don't have a starting quarterback named a week before the season starts. Take it or leave it. The Arizona Cardinals are the most dysfunctional and messed up organization in sports right now. Oh, well, in, in sports, in, in pro sports, in pro sports. Ooh. Ah, because there's a lot of different stuff going on. The Knicks have kind of passed them in terms of organization. Knicks uh, used to be the one. The, the Ottawa Senators used to be right there. They aren't who there has anymore. Some mess going on. I, the they, Washington Commanders aren't there anymore. Yeah. Well, the yeah. Commanders stuff they is so pretty they, messy. They, they, yeah. They 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 own, I mean, they got a new owner. The Coyotes so. are playing in a college arena. Oh, that's pretty that's dysfunctional. Bad. That's pretty bad, yeah. That's well, what about that, that's the, the same town. What about the A's and all just kind of the <laughs> undercurrent? Yeah, I yeah. like that one. Okay. Yeah. A's. A's, A's is a good one, Any too. Oakland franchise or that used yeah. to be yeah. in Oakland. But this is not, not going, going to get fixed. I said used to be. Yeah, the, the problem is, the problem. at least the A's. Dysfunctional. Yeah, they, they have an owner that's obviously a mess. But they're going to go to Vegas, and somebody's going to want to work for them. After all of this stuff. Well, and you know what? I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it because when they had that poll that they did last year for worst facilities. It was yep. reported by the players that was, uh, you know, all the players did the voting. Yep. Worst facilities, food. paid to, had to pay for food. Yeah, I'll take it. It's dysfunctional. It Hopefully is. Hopefully he gets fired. Well, you know, he gets fired, has to sell team. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. I don't think anytime you force your employees to do something that goes against the, the integrity of that person, mm-hmm. goes against, you know, code policy, and you know it's wrong, and you, because you're their boss, you're essentially forcing them to do it, and then you get fired any damn yep. way. You might as well do what the hell you're going to do. And you know what's a shame? He is a nice Michael Bidwell, outwardly, to people like me, a nice, classy gentleman. So I just didn't see this coming. I'm really surprised by it. But organizationally, they are a mess, and I've got them. I'm, I'm taking mine as two, too. They're, they're, they're the most messed up in sports. I think I could take it. Well, some people texted, and what about the Angels, the Colts? Oh. I would say angels are up there. Angels that's very that, interesting. How, yeah. Why would you trade for all those people and then just just say, all right, go? It looks so yeah, bad. It kinda, was fun. Weird. Yeah. Cool. It was cool. While the, what? A, a month? Was yeah. it even a month? No. A, a, no. A trade deadline was days. August 1st. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was they, fun while it lasted. They, they've got issues. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, yeah, I don't know. At least they don't have people filing suit against them from their Not front yet. office. Oh, <laughs> that's <knows. laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, Jordan Walker went 4 for 4. First four hit game of his career, batting fifth. Tell you to leave it. That's his new spot for the rest I'll of the take season. It. Yeah, take it. Do you think eventually yeah. maybe yeah. they'll move him up? I think he's going to be, he should be there for the rest of the season. You go 4 for 4. Oh, mm-hmm. for the rest of the season, yeah. yeah. Batting behind yeah. Arenado, why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Was it, those guys get on base. They're not going to want to pitch around you or throw any nonsense up there to you. Right. I believe it was Moses Malone that said before a playoff started one time when the NBA only had three rounds, <laughs> fo, 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 fo. fo. <laughs> <laughs> and they went fo, five, fo. Yeah. That's good. Uh, take it or leave it. We were talking about Taylor Motter during the break. Take it or leave it. He's going to be a great minor league coach. Take it. But when? Yeah. How soon? 2024. Oh, oh my God! Oh wow, that is Randy. Happen in a hurry. Still, he's not going to be extended baseball. this offseason. Somebody will go to him, like somebody went to Tony Larusa. I think it was George Kissel actually that went to Tony Larusa and said, "You know what? 
You'd be a good coach. You should start That's that now. That's not what you want to hear when you're playing. <laughs> no, it's not. You, you, you know, you can hear a lot of things. But when you're in the middle of your career and mm-hmm. someone says, you know what you'll be when you, you know what you're going to do re- really well? You're going to be a good coach. Like, mm-hmm. next year. Yeah, it's probably Especially not what you want to hear. It's like, wait, what? Yeah. I'm... I'm Kind of disappointing. 28. I still got juice. <laughs> yeah, what do you mean? Well, he's 33. He is <laughs> an older gentleman. Nice long hair, though. He's got golden locks. That's why he'd be a great third base coach with those those locks flying in the wind oh, as he yes. waves a runner home. Yes. Be glorious. I gotta take my son to see Mason win. Guess who? He's a yeah. really good player. The, uh, well, as I'll long take as you as, as long as you just uh, as you point out to young Xavier, that guy wearing number 55. You'll never forget him because he's going to be a great coach. Oh. <laughs> I can't. I will let him know. Uh, Keep your eyes on that one. Matthew, Matthew sounds disgusted by this. Like, he, I can't believe he's saying this about my guy. I mean, he's got a nice uh, sport jacket collection. I love it. That, that was that was a nice jacket that he, that you took. He, that was. Uh, we, I was at a Vegas night and I got a selfie taken with Taylor Motter, who's just a wonderful human being. He is being. very He's nice. He's a great guy. Yes. And he was all in on the Vegas night thing with the uh, the white jacket with the the playing cards. The, the likeness nice is all over it. It was very cool. I, I loved like it. when they do that. When, like the co- when they have events and they actually dress up for it, like Panger. Yeah. I always think about him yeah. dressing up as the Oscar. Yes. Okay. That was fantastic. Um, I like the cut of his jacket, not so much as swing. Um, <laughs> tastes fine. It's just one little shot. Oh, Hardy huh? hits it. <laughs> just part of the just walk out home, run for the Cardinals, by the way. I didn't see that How coming. About <laughs> that. How the, about that? Yeah. I, I, I put that up. I, I had my fan duel out. I was going to bet on it. You didn't it bet on it? I said I couldn't. Gosh darn it. There's Richie Palacios right in the middle of it. See, right there. Whenever something oh, good happens for no. the Cardinals, he's right in the Tom middle Edmund of it. Hit it. Take it or leave it. The Missouri Tigers football team will be in the top 25 by or before the last week in September. It. Take it. Take it. 25 before the sled. They're going to be 5-0 and going into that LSU game, CD. College game oh, day on, in man. Columbia. You're going to be 5-0. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yep. 5-0. and oh. Okay, uh-huh. you, you heard what? it here first. 5-0. and oh. At least 4 and From Randy. Yeah. At least 4 yeah. If they're four and one, they won't be in the top twenty-five. No, they'll be five and zero, and they'll play LSU, and then they'll get drilled. But well, still, it'll be fun to be in the top twenty-five. What happened to the sunshine? Sunshine. Well, five and zero is uh, no, no, no. They beat LSU. No, they beat LSU. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they're, they're gonna beat LSU. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on. Uh, you all think they're gonna? Do you all know they play Kansas State, right? They're gonna drill Kansas, Kansas State. State. Is, what happened last year? Yeah, well. Last year, Kansas State had a different looking team, different quarterback, different offensive line. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. all right. Uh, and, and Mizzou has well, obviously. They, they're basically a saying line. Middle Tennessee stands Randy. no chance in week two. Randy. Oh, Karen, well, we have two quarters. The last time the that they face each other, 2016, Middle Tennessee, Middle Tennessee State Blue Raiders. Homecoming. Oh yes. Carrie, every other team they rode their, on to victory. Every other team in their schedule only has one quarterback. Mizzou has two. Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, it's yeah, math. three. Oh, well, they're going to they're dominate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how this could work. Take it or leave it. The Lions shocked the league next week and beat the Kansas City Chiefs in a nail-biter of a season Ooh, opener. Ooh, I like this one, and I'm going to take this I'm for gonna fun. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to have to leave that one, too. They're going to run all over that defense without Chris Jones. Ooh. Yeah. It's going to happen. We'll see. It's going to do. Some kneecaps are going to get bitten Ooh. that day. Wow. Yeah. That just happened. Take it, or leave, take it or leave it. Every other coach in professional sports should have to wear the uniform just like baseball. I love that idea, especially for uh, football. I would love to see that. I would love to see that. Basketball is the funniest one, right? Yeah. Basketball, yes. basketball so, would be the most humorous, right? Football would be because you wear a uniform without pads. Oh, that's and true. And you're, you're built. That, that <laughs> uniform is built. It shrinks it, you a little yeah, bit. Yeah. 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 It's, it's made for a... Uh, but I, I like the idea with pads on the sidelines. Can you imagine how terrifying? Coach? Yeah, why not? Craig Berube would look like he'd still be able to go out there and throw a few punches if he if he walked out there in pads. Oh, yeah. Berube would look terrifying. Okay, this he is, already looks yeah. terrifying, and it, but he's a super nice man, but he already <laughs> looks terrifying anyways. Yeah. This might be uh, tasteless, but I, I, that's what I'm all about. Uh, is Mark Mangino dead or alive? Oh, he's alive. He's alive. Okay, he's alive. so uh, Mark Mangino. In he's a, alive. Yeah. No, no, thank Where you. Where are we going? No, thank you. So could you ma- imagine Mark no. Mangino? No. No. <laughs> No, 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 no,
Oh, you so that funny. funny. You know what? Did, are you guys old enough to remember Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Yes. So yes. The original KU, one. Yeah, yes. When he was at KU, he looked like the girl that was the blueberry. Oh, Stop. Man. No. Viola? What was her name? Viola? Yes, yeah, it was Viola. Yes. Did, he, did he not? With the, the giant Randy. blue Randy. eye? He was like perfectly uh, round. So what's up? What do we have? Was fresh tape. Next. Roman Roman Take it or leave it. Hold on, we got to think of one other football coach now, an active football coach. Somebody said Andy Reid. That's a winner. You don't want to see that? You know what? Andy Reid would probably rock the uniform really well. Well, it's it's end of season Andy Reid rather than beginning of season. Andy Reid at the beginning of the season always looks felt, but then by the end of the season he's had a few cheeseburgers. It's a long season. Long nights. As you imagine, Greg Popovich in basketball. Of all shorts, oh, man. a jersey, short ones. and like a, sh- and like a shoe. I want to see like the half half socks. I want oh, like a shooter yeah, sleeve too. <laughs> <laughs> Picture Greg Popovich coaching. That's amazing. amazing. What, what exactly. College coach uh, would would fit that mold that you'd love to see wearing. Bob Huggins. Like, yeah, I was thinking uh, that. Basketball. One hundred percent Huggy Bear. Uh, basketball. basketball. I would love to see uh, uh, Brad Underwood. Well, that'd be what about Dennis Gates? Just, just, he he like, still he like, he and that's he what I'm saying. Okay. It's like yeah. it, it, would, it would in a, work in, a, in his in favor. A basketball oh, would be great. That would be, oh yeah, yeah. a headband. We so much to create these. <laughs> I like this idea. Oh, one more. Take it or leave it. Zach Thompson is the number five starter uh, next season. Take it. Number five. Where, so where is Matt? He's the four. Hey, Matt's is the four. Okay. Michael, Michael is, is the three. three. Michael is the three. Snell, yeah. Snell, Snell, Snell is two the two or one. Snell two. Nola one. Nola one. Oh, Cease two. Nola one. You're gonna have Snell. And no, Snell? Snell, Snell or Nola and Cease. Yeah. All three? Snell or Nola. Oh, okay. Can we get all three? Yeah. Can you? I mean, it's not our money. Right? No, we can't. No. We can spend it how we feel. But the thing is, do you want, really want Zach Thompson in the bullpen, or do you want him to achieve his full potential? I want him to achieve his I full want him potential. To be successful. So and let's help. get him. Let him start him at number five, and then he starts game two of the playoffs. Now. I'm going to take it. I think he will whoa. continue to get better. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Well, that was a that was a jump. That was you a always leap. had that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's a, you just Left snuck that one in there, there, huh? Didn't expect that, did you? No. How about that? How about, how about that? that? <laughs> Coming up next on 101 ESPN. And it's our fresh take. Does it make sense for the Cardinals to trade Gorman and Graceffo to get the aforementioned Dylan Cease? I'll tell you why it does next on 101 ESPN. How about that? <laughs>
fresh perspective on the day's top stories. It's the Opening Drive's Fresh Take. Brought to you by Schnucks Rewards. Reward yourself. Earn 2% back on every purchase with the Schnucks Rewards app. Yeah, I think so. He's, he's only got two years left. Um, so, yeah, you're get, if you're the Sox, you're getting you know, club maybe close to full value. It's two full, two, two full seasons. And that means um, two guys, like you mentioned. Uh, yeah, I, I think that would definitely be enough. Every trade, every good trade hurts a little bit, right? And there's a strength there for the Cardinals. And you're feeling a weakness. I don't think you, you, you look back if you trade Gorman and say, oh, look what he's doing now in 26 or something. No, you, you, you have a huge weakness. The most important part of your team is a disaster right now. That's our friend Jesse Rogers of ESPN a couple of days ago when I said, as he talked about the possibility of Dylan Cease being traded, would it make sense for the White Sox, if they were going to move Dylan Cease, to trade him for a package similar to Nolan Gorman and Gordon Graceffo, the Cardinals' le- left-handed slugger, and Gordon Graceffo, one of their terrific prospects. Gorman this year is uh, hitting 235. His OPS is 796. He has 24 home runs, and he's driven in 68. And he's going to get even better. I think that he'll be a 250 hitter. I think he'll be an 850 OPS guy. I think he's going to be great. But the Cardinals have, when healthy, a lot of left-handed bats. They're going to have Lars Newtbar. They're going to have um, uh, Bur- uh, Alec Burleson. And they're going to have uh, the old Irish at second base. Oh, no. Tommy No. Uh, Donovan. Donovan. Brendan Donovan. Brendan Donovan. The old, old Irish? Old Irish. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. <laughs> That's the first time I've heard that second. <laughs> Wait, did you Is that a standardism? No. You <laughs> just call Brendan Donovan old Irish out of nowhere just without it. any previously established <laughs> usage yeah. of it. Like, I've, I've never heard, heard that. that. Uh, I was like, Jeff Flair, uh, are you trying to go with this joke like again? He's out of the team. He doesn't play second, second base. base. <laughs> in, my, in my mind, he's old Irish, okay? Brendan Donovan. Thanks for letting us know. <laughs> Thanks for letting, keeping us privy to the, the, the yeah. conversations that take place in your head. Now, that was the epitome of an inside joke, like a true oh, inside joke. Inside my mind. <laughs> so, anyway, so you've got a lot of left-handed hitters coming back, trying to get back on track here. It's not easy. Uh, but anyway, last year, Dylan Cease was second in the American League Cy Young voting. He had an MLB record 14 consecutive games where he allowed one or no runs. And... He's had a really good, durable stretch in his four full years in the majors. He leads the major leagues this year in starts. He's thrown 148 in a third, pitched obviously for a very bad team to a 6-7 and seven record and a 4.91 earned run average. That being said, I look at the Cardinals' history of pitching prospects of people like Alex Reyes and Jack Flaherty and historically, Matt Morris is really the last pitcher that they've developed that turned out to be a good durable guy for them obviously Sandy Alcantara has turned out to be a good durable guy but by a wide margin Cardinal production at a high level among starting pitchers doesn't match expectation over the last 25 years so I would be willing to roll the dice on a guy like Graceffo and I know that I have to give up something that I don't want to give up if I'm going to get a starter the quality of Dylan Cease so would I move Nolan Gorman and I hate to do it yeah. because I know he's going to be good but I would would I give him up when I have some depth with Burleson, Newtbar and Old Irish <laughs> I'm sorry, that was... Brendan Donovan. Oh, oh, okay, thank Donovan. you, Steve. Yeah. Would, would, I, would I give those two up in a trade for Dylan Cease? Yes, I would. I will not be one... Both if, of them. If that trade gets made, I will not complain one iota because the hardest thing to find right now is that ace starting pitching. Look at the Mets spending $43 million trying to find guys, and they got Scherzer and Verlander, of course. But... Uh, the Dodgers right now, they, they still have their guy as Clayton Kershaw. Mm-hmm. You've had the injuries to Urias. You've had the injuries to Walker Bueller. Now Tony Gonsolin undergoing Tommy John surgery. Every young pitcher goes through it at some point. And I just think the Cardinals' need is so dramatic at this point for that, qual- well, actually two quality guys, that I would do it. What would you guys do? 
I think with the whole Gorman situation, I've been saying this, of course, you're going to have to make this offseason because the position that you've put yourselves in and you said that you are going to go out and get three starting pitchers this offseason. We know how expensive the market's going to be for starting pitchers. One of those is going to have to come via trade. And it's not going to be an easy trade where you maybe do like, you know, I don't know, like a Dylan Carlson for a starting pitcher, which it seems like they did try to do during the trade deadline. Remember, that was the rumor that was floating around that Dylan Carlson, they were looking for a starting pitcher in return. We see how that worked out. You're going to have to do a puke point trade. And that would be the likes of, I believe, a Nolan Gorman. And we know that Nolan Gorman is definitely going to go and hurt you in the long run. That's going to be a trade where Mm -hmm. a lot of people are going to continue to debate for years of if this might have been the right move or not. But when it comes to pitching and how coveted it is and how many people are competing for it, you're going to have that puke point trade. And I think Gorman's going to be that guy. You have to make that move. And my concern with Gorman is, is his back issues. How long has he had those, Brooke? I was just setting you guys up for that. Intriguing. How long? I don't know, CD. How long? Uh, about a week back. Oh, no, there we no. go. There we go. I was. That's why I did the pause. I knew that that one was coming. The back issues do concern me because he's 23 years old, correct? And he's had these lingering bash, back issues that we've heard all season long. And how many times have we also seen the Cardinals hold on to players, uh, example being Tyler O'Neill, where these injuries, you know, continue to hamper yeah. them. And you're like, maybe we should have moved them when they had their highest value before kind of weighing this out. Even a Dylan Carlson, who was cold, dead hands, and now you have the injuries happening with him where it's like maybe we should have tried to move him prior to this. Yeah, I think when you're looking at uh, a player like Dylan Cease, a starting pitcher, which we all know that the Cardinals need, they are trying to acquire those arms in the offseason, whether it's via trade, via free agency. You have to trade from a position of depth, and I think – At second base, you have multiple people that can play the position. Tommy Edmond, I don't know if Taylor Mott is going to be on the roster next year, but Tommy Edmond, Brendan Donovan when he's healthy, Mm -hmm. that's a couple of guys. Outfield, you also have to to trade from a position of depth and also a position that an an opposing team would want. Mm -hmm. They have plenty of outfielders, the Cardinals do, but does anybody want any of those Mm -hmm. outfielders? Jordan Walker? Yeah, probably. That's probably a yep. guy where you say, yeah, that, that that would be a piece that they could trade if they decided to go that route. I don't think that they will. Is Tyler O'Neill a guy? Hmm, maybe, maybe not. Not going to get not, a starting not for, pitcher. Not for Dylan yeah. Cease, right? Is Lars Newbar for Dylan Cease? Probably not. Alec Burleson, no. Um, who am I missing? Is in Jordan Walker. Richie said, Palacios. Yeah, not, no, not going to. Oh. You can't do that. Oh, okay. No. Not Jordan Walker. So (laughs) you're looking at what is the best player available and what depth do you have at that position. You don't want to trade away a guy and not have anyone to replace him. Nolan Gorman feels like, and I'm not trying to send anyone off anywhere, but I know that this is a business, as do all of the players. It's a business, and if that's your best player you have on your roster, to get that in return, that's probably what you're looking at. And CD, I know you don't necessarily agree with this, but... Nolan Gorman's best position is DH, and yeah. Wilson Contreras' best position is DH. And you're going to have two, and you can only play you one. You can only play one. Mm-hmm. So if you have Herrera and Kisner on your roster next year, it's almost it's almost stupid to have both Gorman because you know you're going to have Cor- Contreras. He's not going anywhere. So Gorman is a logical guy to move. If you're getting – there's there's two, three pitchers that I would move Nolan Gorman in a deal for. Framber Valdez is one, and Dylan Cease is another. And the other one you aren't getting, and that's Spencer Strider. Yeah. Yeah, I I think it it's definitely an interesting thing to think about because no one wants to see Nolan Gorman go because you can see that upside. But doesn't it feel like to you guys that maybe they're not too high on that he can be a position player every yes. single day for I think, them? I think they're concerned about the back. Yeah. Because you have to bend over all the time. Mm-hmm. And with the issues that he's already had as essentially just a DH already, when is that going to stop? Normally, back issues don't. And the best thing for him is going to be to be a designated. I've told you all that's one of the the issues, one of the worst injuries you can have is a back issue because you just don't know when it's going to hurt again, when it's going to pull again, when other things are going to be impacted by it, your, your, your hamstrings, your lower legs, all of those things, your hips, all of those things are tied together from that back issue. And it can cause other injuries because of how you're walking, how you're standing, how you're bending. It just changes everything in, in your mechanics. 
And somebody said, why would a team trade a starting pitcher for Gorman if he's just a DH? Well, he's a 40 home run DH. That's he's a why. stud DH. And that's a team that expected to have really good offense this year. But the offense and they lost Jose Abreu. Uh, that the offense has just disappeared. It hasn't been what they expected it would be. And keep in mind that they would be getting a young, really highly regarded starting pitcher back in this trade as well in Graceffo. It's not just Nolan Gorman that I'm talking about. I think you have to give up multiple pieces to get a guy like Dylan Cease on your roster. And this all started because Jesse Rogers didn't necessarily disagree with the premise. But the baseball people that are actually going to make a trade, they might disagree with the premise. All it takes is one person to say cold, dead hands. If you're the White Sox, do you want to trade Dylan Cease? Yes, he's got two years of control, only two years, but he's also a stud. But if you're him, do you want to trade? If you're the White Sox, do you want to trade him? If you're the Cardinals, do you really want to move Graceffo and, and Gorman. That is a real gamble, especially when your franchise has traded Randy Rosarena and Sandy Alcantara. I agree. And because Graceffo can definitely be another one of those pitchers that you see in the long run where you're like, man, if only we didn't trade him away. But that's that's the point where you're at right now. If you say that you are trying to get this team back to more of a winning standard in 2024, you're going to have to make moves like this. Yeah, no doubt about it. By the way, bad back. Joe Montana back surgery after the 49ers opener in 1986. He's out for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Comes back against the then St. Louis Cardinals. Coming off of back surgery, Joe Montana goes 13 of 19 for three touchdowns. Uh, 270 yards and uh, a 43-17 win for his 49ers against the Cardinals. Coming wow. off of the back injury. Not bad. And then uh, I think he wound up getting what, had, knocked out in the playoffs yeah. there. But they were pretty good. The, the 49ers good. in the 80s. In the, in the 80s, Joe Montana was pretty good. He was. Yeah. All the famer. Yeah. yeah. Even with a bad back. Yep. You know how long he had it? Yeah, about a week back. There you go. Oh, no. Coming someone, up on 101 ESPN. They, they, someone, they wanted it to stop. Someone <laughs> said the jokes, the back jokes don't stop, and neither do the back injuries. They kind of go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we our, have this many. Our friend Jason Mott is back in town with his ninth annual St. Louis Cornhole Challenge tonight at the brewery. We're going to talk to Motter next on 101 ESPN.
Randy Carricker, one of our all-time favorite Cardinals, is former closer Jason Mott. He has his ninth annual St. Louis Cornhole Challenge tonight at the Beer Garden at Anheuser-Busch, and it's to raise money for the Jason Mott Foundation to strike out cancer. And Motter joins us now on the opening drive on 101 ESPN. Jason, good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. How are you doing? I'm doing yeah. well, and uh, we're all doing well. A, a couple of things for you. Number one, you'll be glad to hear this. Last year, my son, who was then 27, was diagnosed with lymphoma, spent the summer undergoing chemo and, and beat it, and he's doing great. And even before that and throughout last summer and now, he wears his K-Cancer shirt all the time, and we see him all over St. Louis. How proud of that are you, that that people have really taken to your foundation? Uh, well, first of all, that's that's awesome news um, from standpoint that's uh that's pretty awesome to hear uh and you know uh our, our, honestly when uh when we started our foundation we just um you know wanted to help out and give back and help people the way that people help uh, my wife's grandfather when he was going through it and her family um and you know when, when we started doing the shirts um we we're honestly we, we started the strikeout cancer shirts just to kind of think hey this would be cool well, you know that, that's what we call our event in memphis uh and then once we started having them here in st louis uh you know, Cardinal fans, Cardinal Nation kind of kind of jumped on board. And, and we, we didn't know they were going to get uh, as, as big and as popular as, as they have. Uh, and, you know, you know, we have the, the red ones here in St. Louis. We have all the different uh, different colors, different, uh, you know, meanings uh, behind them and stuff like that. So it's been it's been pretty cool. And like I said, to have, um, you know, Cardinal fans and Cardinal Nation support us the way they have has been pretty cool. But that's not really it's not really a shock because it's a uh, – pretty cool fan base jason brooke and i are looking forward to the event tonight what expectations what should we expect from this event uh that you're having we're going to be uh do, well first of all do you call it bags or cornhole <laughs> uh cornhole okay yeah you, yeah, yeah. We, we are yeah. some we are people call it bags some yes. people call it cornhole uh it depends on what part of the country you're in and okay. who you talk to like like we call it cornhole for they're like it's bags. I'm like, oh, okay, you can, you can call it whatever you want. I don't, I don't really okay. What do you call it? Uh, you know, and, and, and I've said bags before. They're like cornhole. I'm like, cool, man, sweet. I, 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 I don't know. What it is. Like, you know, so uh, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm like getting in a fight here. Uh, you grab uh, bag, throw it towards uh, uh, a, a uh, cornhole board, and you try to make it in the hole. I'm like, you know, it's a pretty, pretty simple concept. So you can call it whatever you want, honestly. There you go. I like the idea of that. Jason, I also wanted to ask you, we were we were talking about just playing. I, I was explaining to them playing in a in a Super Bowl is you try to tell yourself that it's no, like any other game. Right. So you playing in the World Series, you know what that means, the magnitude of those moments. How does that feel? How do you prepare yourself for that? You tell yourself that it's the same, but deep down inside, you know that it is not. Uh, are you talking about the cornhole games tonight? How intense yeah. they are, or the actual the like, actual the I'm actual a, World Series? Well, okay, because I was gonna say because some people, like I said, I get, we, we do have to remind some people at the event like this. This is a charity event. I, I, are, I may be one, like, so you may have like, to tap me on the shoulder. Yeah, yeah, and, hey, and hey, say, hey, 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 slow down a little bit. All right, no. hey, hey, let's go to back. Uh, you know, you know, um, you know, just just like you said, you know, you, 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 it, it is a, it is another game, quote unquote, um, and. You know, for for me, I tried not to make those situations bigger than they were. Uh, you know, I, I tried to treat every game the same, uh, whether it was a game in April or a game, you know, in October. Uh, you know, from from my standpoint, uh, because then if I if I made it more important, then there were bigger ramifications, I guess, if we lost. You know what I mean? I mean, and probably same with you. Like you didn't want to lose. It didn't matter whether it was a game in whatever in you know in, in October or a game in the Super Bowl. Like you know, you you didn't want to lose the game. Uh, you know, so so for me, I kind of looked at it that way when I went out there and pitched. I was like, I'm going to go out there and do uh, the best I can. And honestly, I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, what what was going through my mind when I when I came out and when I was out there. And uh, honestly, it was it was nothing. Um, you know, I just I, I got the sign. Okay, fastball in, sweet, throw the ball, get it back, cut her away, take a breath. You know, make a pitch. I tried to keep it as simple as possible, but I was you know. I've told people, like, I, I wasn't really that good to think about other things. Mm -hmm. And then being able to go out and do my job, I kind of had to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I know some people are a little bit different, but I, I coach high school baseball now, and I try to 
uh, tell our boys the same thing. It doesn't matter whether it's, you know, the first week of the season in March or whether we're playing in April or if it's, you know, the region or some state state games as we're moving forward. Uh, you got to treat them the same and go out there and throw ball, hit ball, catch it, and, you know, score some runs. Jason, we probably can't appreciate what an incredible resource Ciadi or Molina was for you. When you talk about that, where, okay, uh, fastball and cutter away, all you had to do was see the sign and throw it, right? You didn't have to – that's why you weren't able – or you didn't have to think is because of him, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, he was he was the best. Also, I was told not to shake him off. So, I mean, I really couldn't. You know, I was, I was told not to think. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it, and, and uh, no. Uh, but, but, I mean, honestly, I had to do a fastball 95% of the time anyway. But it was, you know, you, know, you did have to locate. You have to do stuff. But having a guy like him behind the plate, um, you know, he, he, he instilled confidence in, in me and in other pitchers. Um, you know, he, he was playing a game within a game. Uh, and, you know, he would call some signs sometimes. He'd call change-ups. He'd call, you know, my, my cutter in situations. I was out there kind of like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 it, but, but it goes back to, you know, um, you know, my mindset was like, okay, well, hey, he called it. I'm going to make best pitch right now that I can. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to overthink it. I'm not going to think, you know, I got to make this one move this way and do this. And like I said, I wasn't that good to do that anyway. Um, you know, so, so for me, it was a very simple concept of, okay, just execute this pitch right here, right now, execute, you know, this play or do what I can do right now to, to, uh, make this pitch the best one I can. So I I keep it simple, but like I said, having a guy like that by the plate, um, who was calling pitches, who, who you knew would block balls, who, if a guy tried to steal, you knew he was throwing him out. Um, you know, Yachty, uh, Yachty was the best. Well, Jason, as we're talking about ultimate competitors, this season has been just really hard for fans, but also for the players as well, because you do have so many talented players and competitors. Of course, Adam Wainwright in his final season. What have you observed about the Cardinals this season and what you might think has been going on? Uh, you know, I, I've, I've watched uh, some of the games, you know, to be honest. I uh, haven't watched a ton of them. Uh, I've got, I've got, you know, some little ones of my own uh, back home. And I'm like, I said, my wife coaches some high school basketball and I coach high school baseball. So we've got 60 to 65 high schoolers that we're chasing down, which is a lot to begin with. Uh, but, but, you know, um, it's, 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 it's a tough year, uh, you know, and those things happen. And I've, uh, you know, I was, I feel like lucky enough when I was here in St. Louis, not to really, um, I guess have have those kind of years uh, while, while I played here, but I did go on uh, to to some other places and played, and we, and we had um, you know some not so great years, and, and it's tough. But you still have to go to the ballpark every single day with a mindset of like, all right, here we go. You know, today's a new day. I've got to I've got to focus on today. I've got to do the best I can today. Uh, you know, to uh, to go out there and, and do everything we can to help this ball club win. I mean, and, and even watching the past, you know. Uh, Two nights, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, coming back and having, having walk-offs uh, against the Padres, uh, you know, it, it, it shows that they're not just sitting out there and be like, well, we're just going to cash in and we're losing. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's a team that is trying. Uh, you know what I mean? It's not, and I, I think some people think like, oh, well, you know, are they trying? It's like, yes, yes, they are. You know, <laughs> like, like, you know, you, you go out there when you're at this level, it's, it's a, you know, you know those, those guys are, are, are big leaguers too on the other side. Um, you know, and uh, that's that. You know, sometimes the ball doesn't uh, doesn't go your way. Sometimes, but, you know, it has been a tough year, and I'm, I'm I'm sure for those guys, it's been it's been tough in there. But you know, they're, they're going in there, giving everything they have, which is uh, you know, which which I don't doubt uh, for one second that they're going in there and uh, giving it all they have every single time out there. Jason, you you said you coach high school baseball. I coach high school football. Uh, I was watching a video earlier this year where Deion Sanders was trying to teach his son about playing the cornerback position, and his son was like, that's not how you do it. I have my kids tell me that's not how you do certain things. How often do you as a high school coach have kids that know more about baseball than you? Uh, you know, it's funny, uh, you know, as they get older, like, uh, I, I, I think, and maybe, you know, with, with, with you as well, like the, the, the freshmen, you know, like the freshmen and the freshman parents kind of, like, Ooh, okay. All right. Like, you know, that's, that's, you know, he did this and he yeah. did that. But then by like sophomore and junior year, like they realized that, Oh, by the way, like, like we are just people yes. like, like, you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, like we just happen to, you know, you just happen to be able to play football yeah. really well and like I couldn't do that and you know I just happen to be able to throw a baseball decent sometimes <laughs> you know so uh and I, I I tell our boys I'm like listen I'm like I do not know everything 
Uh, I was like, you know, I, I kind of rely on our coaches um, to, to help as well because, uh, like I said, I don't know everything. I, I, um, I try to help out as much as I can and, and do everything I can. But there are sometimes that, you know, someone's like, hey, well, you know, Johnny said this. And this made more sense. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. But if you heard it that way better, sweet, man, that's, that's, that's awesome. But, 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 but like I said, as they get older, like I said, it turns into, uh, it, it, it turns from it like, oh my gosh, you know, he did this, like, oh, he's just a person. And they, they kind of mess around and joke and yeah. do, uh, you know, do everything, you know, just like, oh, he's a, he's a, you know, he's a, He's an actual human, you know, <laughs> it's not like, you know, and, and, that, and that's exactly what I, what I want our boys, you know, to, to, to be able to have that looseness, um, be able to take a breath, relax. And, you know, I tell them all the time, like, listen, like I, I wasn't perfect. I've, I've, I've made plenty of mistakes and I'll probably make mistakes out here. I'll probably call a hit and run and it'll be a stupid call, right. you know, like, and we'll get, you know, I'm like, and, and Hey, that's on me. My bad boys. Hey, I, I shouldn't have called the still there. I shouldn't have did this. Um, but you know, for, for me, from that standpoint, you know, letting them know that that mistakes happen and it is okay, but let's learn from them uh, and so like that. But yeah, they, uh, you know, they're they're funny, man. I mean, it's uh, I mean, it's 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 funny. But like I said, my, my wife coaches high school basketball, so she's got girls um, uh, doing the same thing, and it's uh, you know, it, it's 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 funny, but it's an awesome experience, you know, for for me and the, the ability to give back. Uh, the way that my high school coaches um, get back to, to the game and taught me the game and made me love it even more than I already did. Uh, it's kind of something that I always wanted to do. And, you know, the ability to do this and to help out and give back is, uh, is pretty cool. So I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm very, uh, you know, honored to be able to do this and help give back to these boys. If you would like to get involved with the Jason Mott Foundation, you can go to jasonmottfoundation.org and you can help strike out cancer. The ninth annual St. Louis Cornhole Challenge tonight at the Beer Garden at Anheuser-Busch. And Jason, thanks for all that you do, all that you've done for St. Louis. It's pretty cool to save the the seventh game of a World Series championship team. But in addition to all the things you're doing to help strike out cancer, we really do appreciate it and appreciate your time this morning. Well, thank you all very much for having me, and I'll see you all tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. You bet. Take care. Jason Mott with us on 101 ESPN. Coming up, let's see if uh, Matthew has a fighter. Do you have a fighter or do you need one? need one? Oh, we need a fighter. Text in 314-399-9646. 314 yo Text in your name and the word fight if you would like to participate in the fight today here on 101 ESPN.
This is Rocky with your Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. The Cardinals with a win over the Padres in the series and the game last night thanks to another walk-off hit for Tommy Edmond. This time, two outs, a two-run home run to walk it off for the Cardinals. Again, a 5-4 win. They're going to be off today. They finish out the month of August with an 11-16 record in the month, and they will start their September with a three-game series hosting the Pittsburgh Pirates starting on Friday. Also last night, St. Louis City SC, a big 2-1 victory over over Dallas FC it was a low scoring game despite Dallas being down a man since the 25th minute that St. Louis City finally broke through in the 82nd minute with a goal from newcomer Anthony Marcanic. They also got their first ever MLS goal from Nokvi Thorison who made it 2-0 in the 85th. That is your Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating Cooling, an independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. Drive. I am Kerry Davis, joined by Brooke Grimsley, and it is time for the fight. And our fighter today is Aaron. Aaron, how you doing? Great, guys. How are you this morning? Doing Good. well. Did Aaron or A. Aaron? Which one, which one do you prefer? <laughs> it depends on who's asking. All righty. Oh, there you go. Like you done messed up. You done messed up now, Aaron. A. Aaron. Here we go. Love that sketch. All right, what is the highest scoring single season offense in the NFL history? The only group to ever top 600 points. Is it the 2007 Patriots, the 1998 Vikings, or the 2013 Broncos? 07 Patriots. Justin Falk led all Blues defensemen last year with 50 points, 18 more than the next closest demon. Who was the second? Blues defenseman scoring with 32 points. Was it Colin Pareko, Tori Krug, or Nick Letty? Nick Letty. Happy birthday to Big City, excuse me, Jumbo Pepsi, Matt <laughs> Adams. Adams hit 20 home runs for a single team just once in his career. Which team did he do it for? Is it the Cardinals, the Braves, or the Nationals? Just the Braves. There is only one NFL receiver with three different 150-plus yard playoff games in their career. Which longtime NFC West receiver holds that record? Is it Jerry Rice, Isaac Bruce, or Larry Fitzgerald? Fitzgerald. You say Larry Fitzgerald? Yeah, that works. All right. All right, we need to double-check the score. Uh, okay, okay. Aaron, how you feeling? Well, we're going to go... Uh, not well. Not well. Not great. Not, <laughs> Not great. great. <laughs> well, you, here's the thing. You sounded very confident in your answers. You didn't have you didn't have to think much. You went right after it. You you sounded very confident. It seemed as though you you may have done okay. We'll see. Well, we'll just have to see. We'll see how Depends well. Depends on whose version of okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the confidence was there. If not, nothing right, else. right. Randy, say hello to Aaron. Aaron, good morning. How are you? How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening. Thanks for playing. You bet. All right, here we go, Randy. What is the highest scoring single season offense in NFL history? The only group to ever top 600 points. It's the stupid Patriots. The 19 and 0. Pa- oh no, they didn't hey, go 19 and 0. Oh, oh. We've. Uh, I think we've got an 18 and 0 patch on my desk in the office and uh, <laughs> they didn't win a championship they did not <laughs> good for them but they did uh, the 2007 Patriots did score a lot of points I think Tom Brady might have thrown 50 touchdown passes and I think Moss might have caught 23 but uh, it's a lot a lot of good that does you when you lose in the Super Bowl <laughs> <laughs> thank you Spags <laughs> love you Justin Falk led all Blues defensemen last year with 50 points 18 more than the next closest demon who who was second out of the Blues defensemen scoring with 32 points. I'm going to go with Tory Krug. It was Kruger. 32 sounds right for him. Happy birthday to Big City. Excuse me. Jumbo Pepsi. Mm-hmm. Matt Adams. Adams hit 20 home runs for a single team just once in his career. Which team did he do it for? 20 home runs. I'm going to say that... Uh, hmm. I'm going to 
go with Atlanta. He tr- he was traded to the Braves in exchange for Juan Yepes. Uh, the Cardinals got Yepes for him. Um, I don't think he ever might have been the Cardinals, but I'm going to go with Atlanta. It seems like he had a pretty good year in Atlanta that first year there. There is only one NFL receiver with three different 150-plus yard playoff games in their career. Which longtime NFC West receiver holds that record? Three plus, three 150-plus yard games. I don't think Flipper Anderson was able to pull that off. <laughs> Good pull. Um, I, well, Jerry Rice had at least two. Because one of them was in the Super Bowl. Um, I'll do the lifeline just in case, but it, my, my inside track here is going to be Jerry Rice. Okay. But I'll take the lifeline just in case. Jerry Rice, okay. Isaac Bruce, or Larry Fitzgerald? It was not Isaac. And I don't... Uh, I'm just going to take the the odds here of the number of playoff games that Jerry Rice played versus the number of playoff games that Larry Fitzgerald played, and I'm going to go with uh, with number 80, Jerry Rice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a tie, a very low scoring tie in the fight today. But let's go through those the protocol here because we haven't done it in a while. I will read off the question. We will then give Randy a moment to write down his answer. And then after Randy has written down his answer, showed everyone here in the group, we will then get the audible answer from Aaron. Whoever is closest to the pin will be the winner of today's fight. Aaron, do you understand those rules? Absolutely. All right, Randy, do you have your paper ready? I do. All right. You didn't ask if I have a pen ready. Oh, sorry, do you have a pen ready? I do. That, that part matters as well, you're right. All right, here we go. New Cardinals Hall of Famer Jose Okendo, known for his defense. What was his total home run total in his career? What was Jose Okendo's career home run total? Hmm. Hmm. The secret weapon out in the field. How many times did he go yard? Randy Carricker, I hear a paper scratching mm. on, or pen scratching on paper. Uh, I'm going to change this. Oh, he's going to change it. Looks like a yep. Sharpie. It is Ooh. kind of a Sharpie. I hear, yeah, it's got that Sharpie sound to I'm, it. I'm, I'm going to change mine he, Oh, he's going to change this dramatically. Oh, oh, no. Oh, my. Aaron, do not be, do not be swayed All right. by the okay. gamesmanship here. All right, Randy Carricker has given us his answer. Aaron, what is your guess, sir? 136. All right, we have a winner. In today's fight, Aaron forced Randy to the tiebreaker in an old school Cardinals question. Was he able to take down Megamind or does Megamind slink on through here to a Friday fight with a win? Ring that bell. The winner and still champion of the fight, Randy Carricker. The fight is presented by Golf Discount of St. Louis with the most experienced club fitters in town. Why shop anywhere else? Randy, Randy go ahead and hold up your guests to the uh, camera so oh, yeah. YouTube people can see it. They can all see. Randy Carricker guessed 20. Aaron, you guessed 136. Jose Okendo hit 14 career home runs across his Cardinals career. The Cardinals Hall of Famer again with 14 career home runs, Aaron. So that means Randy Carricker did take you down in today's fight. Oh, yeah. Yep, I wasn't even in the ballpark. <laughs> yeah. uh, like a lot of big ones in the World were. Series, too, Jose. There you go. A lot of, oh, so. there you go. Um, like I said, a, more known for his defense, but let's go through those answers. It was just a 1-1 tie today. The highest scoring single season offense in NFL history is the 2013 Broncos with 606 points. The 07 Patriots are number two with 589, and the Vikings bringing up number three. Justin Falk led all Blues defensemen last year with 50 points. It was 18 more than the next closest D-man, which was, in fact, Tory Cruz who had seven goals and 25 assists. Happy birthday to Big City, excuse me. Jumbo Pepsi, Matt Adams. Adams hit 20 home run for a single team just once in his career, and that was with the Washington Nationals. So he hit 20 across the split year. He hit one with the Cardinals and then 19 with the Braves. He then hit 18 with the Braves and three with the Nationals to get 21 in a season. And then his next year with the Nationals, he hit 21 even for his only 20 home run campaign with one team in one season. Pretty nice run there. Three straight 20 home run seasons. Right. There you go. And there is only one receiver with three different 150-yard 
150-plus 150 plus yard playoff games in his career. It is, in fact, Larry Fitzgerald, who actually hit two back-to-back in the 09 playoffs against the Panthers and the Eagles and then saved 176 yards for the Packers in 2016. So Larry Fitzgerald with that record. A 1-1 uh, tie and then a victory on the tiebreaker gives Randy the win today. Thank you so much for joining the fight and joining the show today, Aaron. Yeah. Labor Day weekend. You have a great one, too. Thanks, Aaron. Coming up here on 101 ESPN, we've got uh, two wins in a row. You know what happens if the Cardinals win tomorrow. Uh Uh-oh. It's a winning streak. Has happened. But next up, because we've got two wins in a row, it's a bird watch for you on 101 ESPN. down to the field to give you the latest on your St. Louis Cardinals. This is Bird Watch on the opening drive. It is time for a Bird Watch with Brooke, Carey, and Randy. And we'll start with Brooke Crimsley. Well, my bird watch is going to be Mason Wynn. Do you want to do your win, win, win? I think so. Hold on. Let he me deserves it. Find it. There we go. There he is. Mason Wynn. We talked about it earlier in the show when these past two wins, how essential Jordan Walker and Mason Wynn have been to this. You had that run-saving play 
um, at short for Mason Wynn the other night. And then he hit the double yesterday to extend the game where you had that situation with Tommy Edmond. The fact that he's able to do that and Jordan Walker, too, which, CD, I know you're going to talk about, mm-hmm. I think says a lot about their progression and gets fans, I hope, excited for the future that we'll be seeing from these two. Mason Wynn already kind of showcasing his personality too because yesterday in his postgame comments he talked about how he saw what Jordan Walker was doing we had that four or four day and he said hey I like what's going on can I borrow your bat uh well you know I've been struggling a little bit saw him get four knocks and and got to watch it today what you know obviously a triple away from the cycle and just walked up to him and said hey man like mine's not working let me see let me see if yours has hits and and sure enough it did i love that that's pretty cool i love that i i mean i told you guys i was able to go the day that um he made his major league baseball debut and he has such a confidence about himself and just the way that he holds himself jordan walker too the way mm-hmm. that they've held themselves i think says a lot about who they are and just the personality coming through mason when when we were talking about players having that swag and just kind of that air about them he has that cardinals can use that too yes they needed not only that but the youthful exuberance that people like walker and win bring to the table but let's be honest about it cardinals need some leadership and uh, these are guys that seem to have that personality that can get guys to follow them yes exactly I, i'm excited about watching those two in the future so mine, it kind of segues into what we were talking about. Mine is Jordan Walker. He's a 4 for 4 last night, a 3-1 home run. Uh, Ollie had a, had a thought on the dynamic between Mason Wynn and Jordan Walker. You can just tell they have each other's back, and there's constant kind of encouragement, and, and um, they, they go back and forth a little bit, and it's fun to watch them. But obviously they, they have a good relationship, and you can tell in the dugout and on the field. Great friends, you know, grew, growing up in this game together, both around the same age, just extremely talented players, hopefully in Cardinal uniforms for the next eight to ten years, and you get to watch them grow, mature, and be the next uh, faces of the Cardinals when Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt uh, eventually retire. That's, it's going to happen at some point. Hopefully those two are the next two faces. Uh, as we talk about Jordan Walker, 4-for-4 four four yesterday, when he's batting fifth in the lineup, he's hitting 306 with an OPS of 865. Both are his highest numbers. Why do you think that is? Comfortable and... Uh, Maybe got a couple of guys got, on. Got a guys mm-hmm. on in front of him, yep. yeah. I mean, two really good hitters that are, are in front of you gotta at some point. Strikes. Gotta throw them strikes. Don't want to walk them. Don't want to uh, uh, just leave pitches out to, to anywhere so you can get on base and have another batter come up. So he's getting more opportunities to hit the ball in that fifth, in that five hole. Chance to concentrate on a better launch angle. No, oh, well, no. Randy. Randy. Well. I mean, we saw that yesterday. <laughs> he launched that one. He didn't launch that one. Yeah. <laughs> practicing that launch angle. That's why he went down to Memphis. He had to, had to mm-hmm. upper. Yeah, there you go. Do you think That's that in that moment, like the analytical guys are like, yes, <laughs> you totally. see? You know, what, you know what I saw, which was, I thought was hilarious, and, and maybe it was, maybe I was reading too much into it, but when he had his sacrifice fly a couple of days ago, he kind of had this slick, sly grin on his face like, yeah, take that. Like, <laughs> I brought the run in. It didn't it didn't uh, result in a hit, but we got a run across. And it kind of like, a, yeah, I, I kind of know what I'm doing. I know the importance of the game and playing it the right way. I don't care about the analytics. That's what I took from it. Maybe I was reading too much into it, but um, it, it's fun to watch him and win, and it's going to be really fun to watch those two grow up. Guys, a great couple of days for Tommy Edmond, who has improved dramatically in the second half of the season. Before the All-Star break, Tommy hit only 237 with a 693 OPS. Since then, 250 with a 762 OPS. And the most important trait for a leadoff hitter is to be able to get on base. His on base has actually gone down since the All-Star break to 291. You need to have a leadoff hitter at 340, 350, 360. So I'm not sure that in the long run, you can have Tommy Edmond being your leadoff hitter i think mason win even though his numbers aren't great so far but he's only a rookie mason win and lars newbar are the guys that need to be at the top of the lineup but tommy edmund is a nice piece of this puzzle and i truly believe that he's going to wind up in center field and he should be down in the lineup ultimately with all the success that he's enjoyed the last couple of days he's been around long enough so that we can have a pretty good gauge the sample size is that 
he's not going to be the best option for the Cardinals as a leadoff hitter, but when he's hot, like he is right now, he's a big-time difference maker. It's hard to predict when he's going to be hot, but when it happens, it's pretty special. It is, and with Tommy, too, the way that he's able to showcase his versatility defensively, as you mentioned there, we've seen him, all the different positions that he's been able to play this season, and we know the Cardinals are really high, especially Ali Marmol and him being their center fielder, and he gets to show off his base IQ and he has offensive versatility mm -hmm. that's the player that's really hard to part with the only reason I ever thought maybe they would part with him because of the value that you could get from him because teams love to see that versatility and how they'd be able to utilize him but with what he's doing right now it's going to be hard to imagine them parting with him especially with him being their center fielder <sighs> Don't say that out loud. I know. Isn't I know. And here, here's the thing. He's the and, and I, well, he's a little bit of everything oh, at this point. Okay. <laughs> you, you would love to have really good offense. And we got spoiled for a long time by Willie McGee and Jim Edmonds having really good offensive center fielders, mm -hmm. right? And for his career, he's a 712 OPS guy. He's not going to be a 900 OPS guy like Jim Edmonds was. Mm -hmm. But... If Walker is what we expect him to be and Newt Bar becomes what they expect him to be and Mason Wynn is what they expect him to be and then Ole Irish at second base is what That's they expect Brendan him to be, that don't yeah. know. Uh, then all of a sudden <laughs> you can kind of cover up the offense that Tommy Edmond doesn't give you in center field. Maybe the key is going to be if Herrera can do at the major league level something close to what he's done at the minor league level this year, which is a well over 900 OPS. Well, what about Richie Palacios? Where is he going to play next year? Uh, Richie is going to be a key part of this squad. Uh, and I think he'll probably wind up in center field. Uh -huh. So yeah. now really? you can put Tommy uh, Edmond in Tommy Edmond will be the perfect utility man. Oh, well, maybe at second base. <laughs> yeah, and then old Irish can bounce around with his five gloves. There you go. No, we're, now we're, 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 we're building a ball club here, Randy. Yeah, we are. This, this, this is coming question, together. <laughs> yeah, question, question for the for the crowd here. Um, so, should Ole Irish have a two questions? He's got like five gloves that he. Put, I know where yeah. this is uh, Just we just who's that again? Just Ole Irish. Was it Brendan the fans? Who that is? Oh. Brendan Donovan. Okay, so we yeah. all we all just yeah. found that out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I just made sure everyone, I, just in case somebody is just <laughs> now tuning in, they understand. <laughs> so, okay, two questions. Number one, do you want him to carry around the five gloves? Should he still be a super utility guy? Yes. Yes. And should the glove bag be restitched? And rather than saying Donny Baseball, should it say Old Irish? Oh, well, I don't know if he even knows that's his nickname. <laughs> I don't know if he is aware of that. Dang it! Is it O L or O L D? O L E O L E. Oh, and he's uh, O L E. O Irish. O -L -E. O -L -E. Yeah. yeah. Irish. Yeah. Brendan Donovan. I okay. think I think somebody might need to point that out to him first. That that's, yeah, his that's, that's his nickname. Yeah. And then take it or leave it. He needs to open a bar, maybe in, on the south side. Uh, maybe Take it. Dogtown. <laughs> Take yes. it. Yep. Take and, it. and it's got to say all Irish. And on top of the I, it's a shamrock. No. This sounds like Obi Clark's almost kind yeah. of similar <laughs> yeah. idea. Yeah. Maybe you could call it Donnie Baseballs. Oh. Uh no, you get yeah. old Irish, and then you get your, then you put your signature in cursive right next to it. Oh, old Irish. Old okay, Irish, good. and then the the signature with your number. And the O I is like a baseball. That. Nah. Oh, this is marketing. We, we, right we here. have marketing ideas for those that need. I got a spot yes. on Hampton just before you hit 44. Used to be Bobby's place. Oh, that's where okay. you put Donnie's yeah. place. Okay. Oh, Donnie's, Donnie's mm. place. Okay. I'm good with this. Okay. I like We're this. thinking. We're thinking outside the box here. This is good. Isn't Ola, or is there like a cleaning product that's like uh, something? Uh, I don't know. You're thinking I, Irish Springs? Maybe, and I don't know. The, the soap. Okay. Well, uh, let's turn it over to the listeners here. Is, <laughs> is, the, is the name Ole Irish already been stolen? I think you're thinking Irish Springs. Probably. This is, this is honestly insane. Apparently, there is a, there is a chain of pubs across America that is owned by Old Irish Pubs Ltd. Oh my! Like they own God. they own they own Irish bars all across America well, under uh, under an Ltd called Old Irish Pubs. Authentic Irish right here at home. They're even on the interwebs. All right, so we have just in the space of one minute changed the name of the bar from Old Irish <laughs> to Donny Baseballs. There you go, Donny Baseballs. Old Irish Pub. Donny Baseballs. Old Irish oh, Pub. Oh, there you go. go. Oh I wow! Like this. Now this this is a true marketing session right now. This is great. 
way that we together. just brainstormed yeah, this. It is. Yeah. yeah. Donnie Baseball, hope you're enjoying this. So, uh, JP Maxwell in the YouTube chat, which Old is just English. chaos right oh, now. That's says, what it yeah, is. Old English that's is a what I was product. thinking about. Old yeah, English that's what I was thinking. It's a liquor. Whoopsies. Old Irish. Old English. Old English. That's what I was thinking. YouTube chat is a. Hell space right now. It is. Come it's on, an absolute Are hell space right again? now. Are they fighting again? No, they it's a fairly <laughs> civilized conversation, but a one that just makes me want to take a long walk off a short pier. Oh, oh man, they're talking about Mizzou over Good here. Lord. Oh, they, they get feisty in the in the because they can see each other's messages. Yeah. That's let's stay that's on the point here. Let's stay we on point. Can't, we can't see each other. They can't see each other's messages. A, in, Cub, in the, a Cub in the fan has infiltrated and completely just taken our YouTube chat. Just oh man, just <laughs> seven ways, just differently. It's crazy. Yeah. Nice. Coming up next on 101 ESPN, we've got our Rush Hour Reset, your red-hot Redbirds closing in on first place. It's next on 101 ESPN. So...
it's time to recap the biggest sports stories of the day on the opening drive with a rush hour reset. Brought to you by Clubhouse Turf, your exclusive partner of Celebrity Greens. We're redefining private golf. Nine oh three in St. Louis. It'll be nine oh four and two one. Woof. Nine oh four. Your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler, with Brooke Grimsley and Super Bowl champ Terry Davis and Matthew Rocchio. I'm Randy Carricker, and it is time for our rush hour reset. What's happening? Well, the Cardinals have the day off after a 5-4 dramatic victory yesterday, a day game against the San Diego Padres, and that game was capped by Tommy Edmonds' walk-off homer against one of the Cardinal nemesis of recent years, Josh Hader. Driven to right. Where? had the call on Bally Sports and the Cardinals did win it by a score of 5-4. They've now won two in a row. Decent start for Miles Michaelis. He gives you a quality start and the Cardinal bullpen turned in a representative performance. But the big story, Tommy Edmond back-to-back walk-offs, including this one against Hader. You got to stay super short against that guy. He's got one of the best fastballs in the game. Um, so I've just uh, kind of been fortunate to have have a little bit of success, and hopefully I can just continue to keep that up and, and carry that momentum over. Tommy Edmund. How about that? Oh, sorry, that was that? too much energy. That was way too much energy, bro. How about that? 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 Tommy Edmund. What a guy. Swell guy. Oh, swell. swell. Swell guy. But I am really excited for him. Josh Hader. As much as I look, I would love to see him in a Cardinals uniform, but it's fun to see him in these situations back to back nights. Did you guys see just like how defeated he looked yesterday and angry? Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he 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 gave it up. Hey, you know. Yeah. Two days in a row. He did. He did. That's a him problem. And then Mason, we got our own yes, we do. Going on. <laughs> we can't feel sorry for for anybody at this point. No, uh, no I don't feel sorry for him. I think it was a little fun to see, is what there I'm saying. It, it, it tickled my fancy a little bit just seeing that to see Hater so bothered. That's in the end good. there. How about our St. Louis City SC back on the winning track with a win over uh, Dallas FC last night and uh, uh, pretty. Darn good performance. And one of the great things about St. Louis City SC is that people that people that didn't do well, that weren't here to do things for SC early in the season are doing it now. Uh, Anthony Marcanic scoring his first career MLS goal. Fellow newcomer, Thor, made it 2 nothing in the 85th minute. And SC wins over Dallas FC by a score of 2-1. to one. And, oh, by the way, we're going to talk to Bradley Carnell coming up at 9.30 here on 101 ESPN, ESPN, the head coach of St. Louis City SC. Yeah, it was a very hard-earned three points from City SC. And you talked about the goals there. And I just... what really impressed me on um, with the cross there and then you had Leuven and Klaus setting up Thor I mean Leuven and Klaus you're excited about Klaus coming back but Leuven has just been kind of a steady force for yeah. City SC this season and the way that he's able to set things up perfectly and just have that vision to know how to set it up and what's coming ahead I think says a lot about him as a player and I feel for Roman Berkey at the end there that late goal that he gave up is just that's that's tough you always want the clean sheet right yes and so that is frustrating but it's a W. W is a W is a W. Exactly. So yeah, and, and, you know, it's 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 a weird thing. You know, you when they lose a man, you expect okay, it's going to be a lot easier to score against them. Mm-hmm. But the game's tied, and at that point, Dallas is just thinking, okay, we just need to get out of here with one point. Right. So they parked the bus. I mean, there were times where they were, were they were putting five and six guys on their back line and just saying, you're not going to get past us. And so to actually be able to break them down for two different goals, getting one on a, on a big cross and getting one in transition, essentially mm-hmm. the only ways you're going to score when a defense is 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 back like that that was impressive they were able to finally crack through i know a lot of people were angry about the offense that you know that you saw the classic fan stuff you know there's no energy there's no the effort half. from the, from this yeah. team right now and it's like we're watching two different games if you see that because this team's trying to crack just a shell that's built to never let anything through and they finally did how many goals did they score they scored two what sport are we playing soccer sounds like pretty good to me me too <laughs> i know i think a lot of people i did see what you were talking about you the frustration in the up. first yeah. half but then the way that they're able to wear 
wear teams down, yeah. I think, is what stands, what should stand out to people, because it is about endurance and wearing teams down eventually, and that's what they were able to do. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you just, like, took every game that City's played and just started in the 70th minute, mm-hmm. I think their record would almost be the exact same. Because everything in there, because so much stuff happens late in their games. They either, yeah. they either get blown out late by a good team like LAFC or Seattle, or they just completely put them away late in games like that. Exactly. Uh, last night, the Cardinals double-A Springfield affiliate coming away with another victory over Northwest Arkansas, 6-5, to five, and Thomas Sejaci keeps it going. Right to the ACL in that 2018 season. Here's a ground ball fair. Down the line, into right field, start the merry-go-round. Bushberger scores. Here comes Scott. They wave Antico. Wilson gets the ball late. He has to go to third with it. Naturals lose the lead, and it's a triple. And it's a triple. And now that triple. was that was the Naturals broadcaster, okay, right? Is fair. that what it is? Oh, okay, okay that was not that wasn't right. bookbinder. But how about I, that? How about that? How about that? <laughs> I just, but I, I will say sometimes the tone a little bit is, uh, is interesting. Is it? I texted you guys last night. Is it a Texas League thing? Because I thought things. And it's a triple. Be, <laughs> and it's a triple. Like I thought things were supposed to be bigger and be- better in the Texas League, what which I know is think? just a play on words there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, maybe it's just a Texas League memo that they have to keep things at a keep certain level. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's not major. We don't want major league excitement here. <laughs> We, we just want we just keep it on on an even keel. It's baseball, after all. How about that? How about Got that? Got to. Triple. Can't be too high or too low. And it's a triple. And it's a triple. <laughs> also, tonight, Mizzou opens up their season against South Dakota, and both Brady Cook, the St. Louisan from Chaminade, and Sam Horn, who was a highly recruited prospect last year, will get playing time. Here's head coach Eli Drinkwitz on whether or not it'll be difficult to play two quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any difference. Uh, when we play multiple players at multiple positions, I think the biggest thing is to allow our quarterbacks to play with a rhythm so they're not feeling like after every play they could potentially be pulled or after every series. So there's a plan in place to do that. Um, they all have a game plan that they're going to execute. I think our offensive coordinator and offensive staff have, have done an excellent job with the plan and, and know what players are comfortable with and and uh, what opportunities we're going to give them. But I don't think there's anybody that's really nervous, like, oh, my gosh, with this quarterback's in, it's going to be this. Or it's not like we're going to run the triple option or wing T with, with one quarterback and spread no huddle with the other one. So we're going to execute our offense. Well, I just thought, and in watching football for a long time, you know, I've been watching football since I was like, uh, well, I, the first game I really remember is Super Bowl three. So okay. I was, <laughs> so this is uh, 19, I was six, I, I was six. So, I've been watching football for 55 years and I've always thought, Carrie, and you're, you're, you played in the Super Bowl. You, you guys used a couple of, of uh, quarterbacks like no, when you won the no, Super Bowl. No, 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 that, no that, we only had so, one. <laughs> Like Charlie Baxter's singing like, it, so the Arizona yeah, Cardinals. No, 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 no. The Arizona they, Cardinals. They, 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 just, they just had one. Mm. I remember the greatest show on turf. It, oh, no. no, there's just one guy. Same guy that was in Arizona, actually. Well, what about like back college then? The back-to-back championships for for Georgia. They played no, multiple quarterbacks. No, 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 no. There's that one guy. I mean, they had other guys come in because they were beating people by 30, 40 points. Okay. So I'm sure they had. Other well, what about like reps. Alabama? Like no, they, they they usually just use one guy. Generally speaking. Okay. It's how it how it works. Um, so, to this is Antoine, <laughs> this is Antoine <laughs> Randall L. Eraser, by the way, and I, and I think Wait. we should point that out. No, here's the thing: you do use other people at other positions. Multiple players play multiple positions. The the, the couple of positions that generally stay the same the entire game, you don't tra- you don't change out your offensive line. Really, ever. Mm-hmm. Left tackle is going to be the left tackle for mm-hmm. You play 80 offensive plays, he's going to play 80 offensive plays. Let's see someone, someone get hurt. Center, you don't really move that guy. You know, maybe you rotate an offensive lineman, depending on if it's a young guy. And you, But for the most part, those five guys are going to be those five guys from the first play to the last play. The quarterback as well. Now, you may rotate in some DBs. You may mm-hmm. rotate in. You're definitely going to rotate a defensive line. You know why? Because it's the same offensive line. You want those guys to be fresh rushing against that offensive line. That plays every play. Quarterback is not a position that you just say, well, we're everybody else is playing multiple times, so we're, we're, why not them? It's not how that works. So, Especially when you're establishing my, things. I have, a, I have yeah. an issue. This is my thing. Don't talk to us like we're stupid. 
Just don't do it. If you don't talk to me like I'm dumb, I will have a lot more appreciation and respect for you. Just say we're, we're using two quarterbacks. That's the system we're going to go with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, but we believe in both guys. We trust both guys. Neither guy has really taken a place, a, a stand to, to be better than the other guy. So we're going to we're going to allow we're going to allow it to play itself out. Yeah, because we trust both of the guys. And if one guy plays better than the other, then that guy might see more time than the other guy. Because I think I think the kids call that nowadays gaslighting yeah, the other uh, way. Call it cap. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's because cap. it's it's just being honest about the situation. Yeah. Kind of like the comments I thought were interesting a little bit with Kirby Moore and the play calling. Yeah. He's, yeah. It's, it's, it's different. But here's here's what I'm hoping. Last year. Jim Harbaugh went into the season saying, we're going to play two quarterbacks because Cade McNamara had beaten Ohio State and gotten them to the postseason, okay? Got them to the Final Four. But he knew J.J. McCarthy was better. So he starts the season knowing that McCarthy was better, but he, he's, you got to respect the guy that got you to where you got last year. Brady Cook is a St. Louis guy. There's a lot of support for Brady Cook here in St. Louis. But I think what you need, I hope this is the case. You just need to prove, hopefully this is the case, that that Sam Horn, who was the number 70 recruit in all of high school football, you, you've got to get into a game where it's obvious that Sam Horn is your guy. That's what I'm hoping is the case. Randy. I don't know, when, you, when Anybody that watched Michigan play football uh, in the last two years knew that J.J. McCarthy was the better right, quarterback. Right. It, it wasn't really a quarterback competition. It was just they wanted K to, to feel okay. Yeah, and that's like what I'm said, hoping he gave, he gave yeah. him an opportunity, but he... I mean, there was there was no question who no, was going to be the starting exactly. quarterback. Exactly, and hopefully, I because I haven't seen enough of Horn. I hope that's the case here. Eh, we'll see. You never know. I, I hope that they aren't planning on playing two guys all year long. That's my point. That would be yeah. a, a rough thing to yeah. do. Uh, I don't and, think and, that uh, would be ideal. Yep. Our Division One team here in St. Louis, the Lindenwood Lions, also play tonight. They open up their season against Wisconsin Stevens Point at Hunter Stadium. It's a fun atmosphere, tickets available, and it's a 7 o'clock start. So there you have it. That's our Rush Hour Reset. We've got some NFL news and notes coming your way here on 101 ESPN.
Well, let's get the checklist out. First of all, I can't talk about players on other teams. Um, we try to be in every conversation. So <laughs> anytime we have good players available to us, we'd like to make the Green Bay Packers better. And uh, we'll look at those opportunities. That's Packers general manager Brian Gutekunst talking about the rumors that the Packers were involved in talks for Colts running back. Jonathan Taylor says, like he said, that uh, he can't mention names, but apparently there were two teams that were interested in trading for Jonathan Taylor, didn't offer enough to Indianapolis. Those two teams were the Miami Dolphins, and now we know the Green Bay Packers. That's intriguing. I I mean, were they going to trade one of their running backs? Was that part of the deal? I the Packers being one of the teams I think is intriguing because they got two guys already. So I don't know where, where that leads them. Uh, I thought the Miami Dolphins one was feasible. I thought that that would be a good fit for Jonathan Taylor. Um, you know, they got Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson, I mm-hmm. believe, as their running backs right now. But those guys aren't as good as what Jonathan Taylor and, and we know that uh, Mike McDaniel wants to run that offense the way that they did in San Francisco. So I, I thought that that would be a good fit. And I still think it's a possibility. Part of one of the reasons that I believe that the Colts decide to, decided to keep him on the PUP list, on the PUP list, was so that he couldn't play, wouldn't get injured. And you may see Jonathan Taylor traded here, you know, within the next week or so. And for fantasy football owners, they're oh, just sweating it out. Because you're one, that's right? Me. Yeah, yes. I'm one of them. Yes. Yep. Drafted just, him in the third round. He was just sitting there. I was like, well, well yeah, why not? Take a risk. And it's definitely a risk. Well, <laughs> we'll see him in week five. <laughs> It'll be a bit. So <laughs> guys who are holding out right now still, Nick Bosa and Chris Jones, yep. which one out of those two do you think is going to have the greater impact on their team with their absence? I think it's Nick Bosa. And, and my reasoning is, is kind of strange. It's because we... Anthony and I were talking about it yesterday on our podcast, the Gridiron Guys, and and part of the reason why I think it's Nick Bosa is because the Chiefs got Patrick Mahomes. (laughs) So even though Chris Jones is holding out, uh, he's the best player on that defense. If you're looking at the overall roster, it's probably Patrick Mahomes and Chris Jones, Travis Kelsey, or Travis Jones, Chris Chris Jones, Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones, whichever one you want to, you want to sort it out. Um, But they still have Patrick Mahomes. For the uh, 49ers, I mean, what Nick Bosa does, rushing off the edge, he was the eight, uh, MVP last year, defensive MVP, 18 sacks. He does a great job. I think he's had 34, 35 sacks over the last two seasons. He's been a very good football player for that team, and they need him. They The, the, the 49ers need him more than what I think the Kansas City Chiefs would need, the, uh, need Chris Jones. Agreed. Yeah, Bosa is... Well, they're both big-time difference yeah, makers. Yeah. But uh, the, I think, this is just my own personal opinion, there are a lot more pieces for San Francisco to be complete without Bosa than the Chiefs. Uh, the, uh, Chris Jones is their, their pass rusher. He is. I right? mean, he, and he's right in the middle. He, he's the one that enforces, you know, he's the one that p- puts pressure on the quarterback, forces them to get out of the pocket. It's hard to play. Uh, that position when you have pressure right in your face right up the middle so he does bring a lot of value but I think Patrick Mahomes himself brings more value than what Brock Purdy or Christian McCaffrey would uh, for for San Francisco it's really a shame when talented people don't get an opportunity it's really a shame for Joshua Dobbs I think he's talented he's obviously brilliant rocket scientist right Brooke or, yes. Yeah. yes and uh, he is going to be the starter for the Arizona Cardinals for him. yeah but uh, who's he going to throw to it's not like he has high around anymore. No, Marquise uh, Brown's still Marquise there, right? Hollywood, yeah. yeah. Uh, who's there? The, James Conner is there at running yeah, James back. James Conner. Well, Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz, is he healthy? Okay, I don't know how good their offensive hey. line is. I just, I, I don't know that that's the best opportunity, but it is an opportunity, and hopefully he'll He'll show some leadership there. Mm-hmm. He'll perform well. And if he shows leadership in a game, that'll be a lot more than Kyler Murray ever did. <laughs> so yeah. uh, that'll be a good thing. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm intrigued by Joshua Dobbs, and that's why I picked him up okay. for Kyler's uh, film room. Mm. Mm. Yes. Uh, maybe they can watch film together. Yeah. <laughs> I have one last one, just because I thought this was kind of a funny, interesting one. I was telling you guys during the break, I didn't think I would ever – find Julian Edelman that interesting or entertaining as a person. Maybe it's just that whole Patriots mentality of how you just not, you're not going to like the the dark force, you know, the dark side it felt like. But he is joining Fox NFL kickoff this season. And so he's been making the rounds on NFL podcasts and just talking to people about his best Bill stories, which, I mean, he does a great impression of him. And here's what he had to say about how Bill would kind of handles when a, handle a player making a mistake. The way he makes fun of guys it's extremely funny 
and demoralizing. If you dropped a ball on the flat or something, he would sit there and he would rewind it. And this is in front of the whole team. Hunter guys, because you got coaches and all the people, upper division there. And he would sit and he would rewind it like three or four times, right where the, the drop is, right where the drop is, right where the drop is. And then he would f he would look at like the crowd of the team, because it's like a pavilion, and he'd be like, you mean to tell me you can't make a wide route catch in the National f Football League? <laughs> we got kids in Foxborough High School that can make this play. I, I love that. CD, what, what do you have to think about that? Listen, this is true. It, it is true. It, it, if you can't make that catch or you drop, it's it's just focus. Stay in focus. I had a coach tell us, if you can't count to three, you can't play in the NFL. Because sometimes we go on one, sometimes we go on two, sometimes we go on three. So if you can't count to three, you can't probably play. can't yeah. play in the NFL. And and you would have guys jumping off sides, false starting on, on two, on three. It just, it happens. It's mental lapses. And the teams that, that minimize those mental lapses, which is why I think the Patriots have been a really good team for so many years. Uh, they, they didn't make the mental errors that, that other teams made. Don't beat yourself. It's hard enough to play a football game. If you play in two teams, the, the opposing team and yourself is going to be a really tough time trying to win that game. Those are NFL news and notes on 101 ESPN. Coming up, a win for St. Louis City SC last night. We're going to visit with their head coach, Bradley Carnell, coming your way next on 101 ESPN.
This is Rocky with your Sports Center update, driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Cardinals win last night on a walk-off fashion for the second game in a row over the Padres. They take that series two games to one, thanks to Tommy Edmond getting the wins on games two and three, including a two-out, two-run home run last night to seal the win. Also last night, St. Louis City SC over Dallas FC two to one. It was a odd game as Dallas got a red card early, but newcomers for St. Louis City, Anthony Markinich and Nookvi Thorson both got their first goals in City uniforms in the 82nd and 85th minutes, pushing ahead to 2-0 again, a final of 2-1. City back in action on Saturday, facing off against Kansas City on Saturday, 7.30 p.m. first kick. That is your Sports Center update driven by Johnny Londoff. Find your roads and shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? You have to believe and, and, and sometimes you have to earn and will yourself to the win, right? You have to create a bit of chaos, you have to create a bit of havoc, you have to be brave to play balls in the box. You have Marty! To... Yeah. Tomasi put it into his own net, Marquette is going to claim it, will get a better look. It doesn't matter because St. Louis, after almost 70 minutes of man up, have broken through. One saddle here at City Park. And the St. Louis City SC came away last night with a 2-1 win over Dallas FC. FC Dallas, St. Louis City SC getting goals from Marcanic in the 82nd minute. Uh, Nokvi Thorson scoring in the 85th minute. Dallas scoring in extra time. But St. Louis City holds on. And we move to the celebrity line right now. And Bradley Carnell, our friend and the head coach at St. Louis City SC, joins us. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? Yeah, very well. Thank you. After that uh, night last night, uh, three points, massive win for the boys. And uh, yeah, like uh, you said on the show, it's, uh, it was a strange game. And uh, receiving that uh, red card, you know, uh, teams always struggle with that. And, and Dallas was a very good defensive, solid unit, um, best in the league up until that point. Um, so proud of my boys to come out there with, with the W. Hey, Carl Bradley, I was looking at the, the fact that you got a couple of guys in there, Nook B. Thorson and Anthony Marcanic, just a few games, you know, with this team. How have you been able to get them into the fold and get them prepared to play? Yeah, listen, I mean, first off, you know, uh, credit to Lutz, we have a tactical profile of what we are looking for with certain players, right? So when we have to make moves and, and we acquire players, we don't just acquire players for the namesake um, and, and it's just a, a, a player, right? We have a look into the details of what uh, and how they can help us down the line here. Um, and, and bringing in Nuxi was a was a very targeted move. We knew what he can bring. We know he scores goals. We know he's dangerous in the box and we know he's a, a, a tireless worker. You know, he's, he's, a, he's a workaholic uh, with his running loads. So, um, and then Anthony Mokanik is a good technical uh, outside back who likes to get forward, you know. So um, it looks like my profile of the type of player I like. Um, and Anthony fits those profiles too. So, and then credit to the staff. I mean, everyone works behind the scenes here, giving these guys videos and uh, individual sessions after trainings and showing them some more video of stylistically how we want to do things and, and break teams down. So, yeah, we were forced into a moment last night where we had to, you know, be a little bit creative and, and be, I wouldn't say uh, organized desperation, but, uh, you know, we had to push the game a lot there at the end. And, uh, yeah, eventually we, we broke or we cracked the code. Coach, just because we didn't get to talk to you about it last week, we have to ask you about the return of Zhao Klaus, having him back with the club, what that is like. We already saw it pay off last night, especially with him and Leuven teaming up to help Thor get that goal. Yeah, I mean, Klaus is, is desperate to get going, and uh, we're just uh, assisting him and guiding him on this journey back to back to confidence, back to fitness. And, you know, don't forget, uh, he, he lost four months, right? Four months is a really long time. Um, but for him... The biggest, the biggest issue is to get the confidence, right? We feel his body's intact, his body can cope with the load, and now he just has to progress the minutes and, and be able to now put teams under pressure. And you can see Klaus has a knack about him to, 
to steal the ball of the opponent, to, to get in the way of passing lanes, to pick up uh, loose balls and to really, you know, occupy the defenders. So he creates and commands a lot of respect uh, from the opponents, which frees up space for the others. And just the way he set that goal up to, to step over the ball and let it go through his legs, is, uh, you know, it's incredible. Just the vision he had to, to know that Nukri was behind him. So, yeah, all these guys coming back now. And uh, again, I mean, we wouldn't be where we are with all the guys who stepped up and took ownership and responsibility. Joe Akini, Sam Adinorant, you know, Thomas Ostrak, all these guys, A.D. Jackson. We've all done an incredibly... Um, you know, humble job there to keep this thing going and keep uh, keep our scoreline always on the positive side. Bradley, how do you get a player back into game shape that misses that much time? We we know he was dealing with a quad injury, so you know when you're dealing with leg injuries, you're not able to run uh, as much as normally or, or maybe as 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 hard as you would normally. How do you get him prepared to get back into game action? Yeah, I mean, medically-wise, you just have to wait till the muscle's intact, right? So, I mean, we did pictures every other week um, just to make sure that uh, we could see the healing process and, and give confidence to the player that now, you know, there's just a bit of scar tissue there. But other than that, uh, the the injury was mended and healed together. So, um, and then it's the mental part, right? So just uh, increments in training, um, small moments, uh, you know, uh, getting him introduced into physical loads and then tightening the screw from there and, and getting those loads more intense. So, again, you know, we have uh, Jared Phillips here who's our head of high performance, um, uh, and he's a guy that, you know, everyone trusts, uh, you know, so much, and he's got a lot of credit with the players. And, yeah, he's done a fantastic job in, in nurturing these players back to back to fitness. Um, so, yeah, again, it's, I think it's a collective effort, and, and it's something that we've always spoke about is being together and, uh, you know, giving these players the confidence um, and, and kind of freedom. Klaus is not a robot, and, and we know Klaus strikers are always, you know, a little bit, edgy they all they want to do is score goals and all they want to do is start games and you know Klaus has trusted us to say Klaus you need 20 minutes here you need 30 minutes there so you know he's he's good to go now and we we hope to get him more minutes at the weekend coming St. Louis City head coach Bradley Carnell with us on 101 ESPN along those lines Bradley you mentioned that last night that you have to throw the game plan out the window when you are when the red card occurs and, and you're presented that opportunity so when you throw the game plan out the window what happens do you let the players just play or do you change your game plan and, and your approach how did that work when the red card occurred. Yeah, you can see we kind of try to carry on after 12 minutes with a, with a similar game plan and against a team now who are just going to defend for their lives, right? So, um, and, and one of the criticisms of this the style of play that we have, we've always been um, criticized of not being able to break down teams. So, you know, we, we were building in a three, but when they get the red card, we didn't need to build in the three. So we could, you know, go back to almost a, a, a flat four and then get attacking outside backs. And so you could see with the intent at halftime, um, obviously there was in-game management in the first half, trying to create a few uh, differences and tweak a few things. And uh, at halftime, we could a- actually able to to develop and, and get a new game plan and bring three new guys in who, who understood what, what the game needed and, and who could see it from the outside. And then obviously there's, there's, there's a, that game plan who has to now start fresh from from a, from a different uh, platform. So, again, credit to the boys for understanding it. Credit to the boys for not uh, giving up. Credit to the boys for sticking to it. And, and, again, you just will yourself, put yourself in these moments. And the biggest thing is when you're one man up, you actually play more passive. You play more afraid because you have a fear of something to lose, right? The other team is defending with 10, um, doesn't have anything to lose. They, they, they destined to lose the game statistically anyway. So, you know, the pressure is always on the team that has to now break down the opponents. And these are not the easiest things. And like I said, Dallas had the best defensive record going into this game. Um, so even defending with 10 was, was a tough nut to crack. Well, Coach, there won't be much time to really dwell on this victory because you guys have such a short turnaround handing over to Sporting Kansas City on Saturday. So how do you handle the short turnaround with this group? Yeah, I think we managed having a how we manage the game now. Yesterday puts us in a great uh, situation. We we took guys out at half time, which now means they've only played a half a game through the week, right? So they had a game against Orlando, then half a game yesterday, and then ready to go full uh, full steam ahead. So you know we have a bunch of uh, fresh guys. Um, and we have a lot of good decisions to make. So, um, you know, just hearing the chatter all over social media or just having a look at what the fans are saying. I mean, we're expecting a sea of red and we're going down to Kansas with, a, you know, a lot of confidence, a lot of headwind. 
um, and, and hoping for a good result there too because, yeah, we, we have momentum and, and, and this is something that's incredible for our group to be match day 27, um, you know, still thinking about where we are, still thinking about how the season's been um, and, again, just playing free and, and playing open. Bradley Carnell, congratulations on the win last night. Go get him in Kansas City, Kansas over the weekend, and we will talk to you next week. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me again. It's been a pleasure. Appreciate it. Take care. Bradley Carnell, the outstanding head coach of St. Louis City SC. They win again last night over Dallas and after the loss in Orlando. And that's going to happen. That's during the course of a long season. You're going to, you're going to fall and you're going to have slip-ups. But big win against Dallas and now the rivalry for St. Louis City SC, at least early on, is the one against Kansas City. So it'll be fun this weekend. It will be. And you're uh, the- excited. No, you go ahead. You heard the big thing there, Klaus, coming back? Yeah. Yes. Santa Claus is coming to town. town. Yeah, sea of red. We want to see a sea of red Seems at that Kansas City Stadium. Sleeping. Yeah. Oh, you don't That's like that creepy. part of the song? That, that line's a little creepy. What is wrong He's with just watching you, over you while you're sleeping. What's what's creepy about that? Come on. I don't want he's anyone in, watching over me when I'm sleeping, he's, bro. He's in the opposing team's nightmares. Oh, oh so you're oh, fine with you something go. coming you like down that? your chimney. Oh. So that, see, I don't like that part either. <laughs> okay. So what do you like about Christmas? He's eating, oh. my, he's eating my food. Nothing. He's, he's kissing my mom. Rich. I don't like this. He's the That's a different song. Oh, my bad. That's a Not fighting things. Oh, gosh. Rock and Roll coming up next on 101 ESPN. Hey, hey, it's Carrie, and as interest rates and mortgage rates continue to climb, Window Nation is still keeping 0% interest. That's right. You can get new windows from my friends at Window Nation, save thousands a day with no money down, make no payments, and no interest for two full year full years. Get 50% off of any style window. That's bows, bays, double hung, any style. You need to protect and increase the value of your home today. Did you know that new windows can save you 30% on energy bills, and windows from Window Nation have the best windows that you can you can purchase. The average installer has over 16 years of experience with over 20,000 windows that have been installed. Call 866-90-NATION or go online at windownation.com. You can get a pair of St. Louis Cardinals tickets with a purchase of House of Windows. The heat, the humidity, the high temperatures are on their way. They have been here. They have been here for the last couple of weeks. You need new windows to keep that cool air in and keep the hot air out. Again, call 866-90-NATION or go online at windownation.com and tell them Kerry sent you.
Ooh, uh, and roll. Let's rock, let's rock today. It's time for rock and roll. Before we get to rock and roll, though, you need to know news you can use. You can join 101 ESPN and Bud Light for Blues and Brews on Friday evening, September 22nd at Anheuser-Busch. Get fired up for the blues season at this outdoor street party featuring live music from country music star Chris Lane and local blues musician Marquise Knox, plus appearances by blues players and alumni, food trucks, blues merchandise, 101 ESPN giveaways and more. Tickets on sale now. Visit 101ESPN.com for additional event details and to purchase your tickets for Blues and Brews on September 22nd. All right, Matthew, what do you got for us? Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you guys a little little soccer story. Anthony Markanik last night, obviously just his third appearance for St. Louis City. He gets a goal. He adds that to his assist. By the way, Anthony Markanik, 23 years old, Randy. He was born on December 26, 1999. Do you know what happened on December 26, 1999? December 26, 1999, did the, the, the Rams already clinched the NFC? They had, but they, they got a big win home that field. night. They they, they uh, actually just they beat up on the Chicago Bears 34-12. to 12 Clinched home field throughout the playoffs. And, and moved to 13-2. and two. They clinched home field advantage. Oh, by the way, Mike Kitchen. No, that was different. That was different. Uh, 99 was different. Sorry about that. And okay. I want I to throw it out there. There's something about Mark Hanick just seems to be, he seems to be a perfect St. Louisan, despite only being here for about a month. Here was his comments last night when asked about the change he was able to make going from worst to first from the Colorado Rapids to St. Louis City SC. I went from last to first, you know, so I mean, I'm not really used to that, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, this team's so good. I mean, just coming from Colorado to here, just so much, like, you could tell why they're in first, even in training and stuff. It's just so much better. The trainings are better, but so much competitiveness in there, so I mean, you, know, you can see why they're in first right now. I mean, the, the crowd is crazy. I mean, especially from Colorado to here, I mean, uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. The, the fans. Suck it, Stan. So here's the thing. <laughs> I love that. When players say, we have the best fans in the world, they're not always telling the truth. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes your fans stink, but you got to say you it. You got to say it. In yeah. fairness, they, we asked him, they asked him beforehand, did you do any post-game interviews in Colorado? And he's like, no. He only played, he played about 600 minutes across two seasons for Colorado. Didn't have any goals or assists. Uh, they weren't really playing him in a good spot. Sure. He comes here, and in under 100 minutes, he puts a goal and an assist on the board for the first te place team after being completely left out of the uh, roster on the last place team. Seems like there's some organizational issues with Kroenke's group over there in Colorado. Mm. Uh, Interesting. Surprising. Hmm. Uh, shocking, you Randy. Have we ever seen that before? You don't want to uh, get into this business to try to win trophies. A cronky team is last place. I'm shocked by that. Um, let's talk about something positive, and that is Mizzou in action tonight against South Dakota. M-I-Z. M-I-Z-O-U. Carrie. Carrie Z-O-U. What's that mean? Do you want me to play the sound again? I'll go find it. I'll go find it. I'll go play it again. I-N-I. Okay. You see what I got on today? Yeah, you got the Illinois representing All right, fair enough. cool outside. I have... Two questions for you guys when it comes to Mizzou. One of them is short-term for tonight, and one of them is long-term looking forward tonight. Which quarterback has the bigger game? Will it be Brady Cook, or will it be the guy who probably takes, I'm guessing, the second quarter and then maybe some snaps in the fourth? Sam Horn. I'm going to go with Cookie. I'm going to go with Cook as I well. I think it will be Cook. Mm -hmm. yep. I do. Just the first quarter, but it's a bad Just team that you're going to blow out. You probably bank three touchdowns in the first 12 minutes. That's why I think it's intriguing that that you almost are going in the way that Drakewitz kind of has insinuated that we're going to be discovering in this mm -hmm. first game maybe who's going to come out mm -hmm. on top. I don't know if you can discover that in this first game of the season. No. Unless so, something just is like glaringly obvious, like right. there's a huge difference yeah. between the two. Point of parliamentary procedure, if you're planning to watch this game. Uh, the representative from 101 has the floor. Thank you. Uh, do you either cook dinner oh, or snacks or do you get a schnook's cookie cake? <laughs> What's the play? I think you do both. <laughs> Randy, you don't do either of them. You go there and you get your soda and then you get your pizza from Emo's. Owned by oh. Brady Cook's parents and oh, sponsored okay. Brady yeah. Cook. Strong move. Strong move. Nice. But you must get something to honor. Well, you, I guess that would honor Brady Cook. The bakery Cook, is really they good, though. I mean, never mind. Get, too, yeah, you know what? Right? Get the cookie cake. Get the cookie I cake. I think they own Sugar Fire, don't they? No, just get, get the cookie cake. I've I, decided. No. I, I, I just don't eat the oh, whole well, cookie cake. You can support me either way. No, eat the whole cookie cake. I think you, you can cook. the whole cookie cake. You can do it at home. The whole cookie cake? Randy, Carrie's telling people to be quitters. No. He's saying don't eat the whole cookie cake. Not in one setting. 
<laughs> oh, come on. Not healthy. Randy, it, well, you know what? You ate an entire chocolate bunny, so I, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think that me so telling you here's, not here's to my eat. Thing. Think about how you felt so, afterwards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> think miserable. about that. Keep that in mind because you felt miserable. Well, a game takes three hours. <laughs> what? You felt miserable. <laughs> the show is three hours. You ate it at the beginning of the show. Yeah. How did you feel the rest of the show? Not great. Okay, think, keep that in mind when you decide to go eat an entire cookie cake. Well... See, I, th this is why I took the point of parliamentary <laughs> procedure to ask what people should do. I'm going to be at the Lindenwood game. So I, I'm go. not going to be watching Brady cooking in the, the, the... You won't see what he's cooking? No, I won't. I'm going to have, have a Schnooks cookie <laughs> cake and an Emo's pizza, and I'm going to watch the Tigers take down and South if you Dakota. don't send a video, or if you don't tweet it, it never happened. So how about that? How about that? Why you how about that? No, nah, if you don't why tweet you, it, you just said that's what you're doing. You tweet that out like tonight. That? Why you gotta do a, like that? a picture of you with an Emo's pizza box and a cookie cake. Who knows Photoshop? Who knows Photoshop really I'll be well. impressed. Do it. No, just do, do it. Photoshop. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. No, no, no. If no, you just say it, you it. might as well. All right, fine. Do it. One more, one more reserve question. Is there any chance that I would not do it if I was home? You would, you would definitely you would. You would. do it. All right. Do it. Looks like I got a plan then. And, oh, and, and, and you have to eat the entire cookie cake Ooh, because you said Because you did say that. You did. You said you're a quitter. I said don't do it. You said you're a quitter if you don't. So therefore, now you're a quitter. Oh, well. Got, what an idea. Oh, oh well, I'm a quitter. Use, uh, <laughs> use a, use yeah, a pizza cutter. That was quick. That was quick. Yeah. Yeah. Use a pizza cutter for the Schnooks cookie cake. There you go. They this is square in. beyond compare. Ooh, yes. Oh, I like that. One more quick question about this, this quarterback battle. So, week three, they face off against currently ranked 16th Kansas State. Mm -hmm. And in week six, they face off against number five LSU. So, uh, between those two, do we have a one starting quarterback by the Kansas State game? They should. We three. I, I was going to say yes, say that because they should. Do the Tigers have one starting quarterback by week three against number 16 currently ranked Kansas State? No. Do they have think. it by week oh, cool. six when they face off against LSU, potentially no. a matchup of two top 25 teams? They'll probably why need both quarterbacks in that I way? said potentially. Why do you keep saying well, that? Well, because they're going to be top 25. Why, why do you keep saying that? What is this? Remember when Illinois started off 6-0? and Yeah, it went downhill. But they it were ranked. But they were 20. <laughs> but they were ranked. 12? Yeah, when they finished 6-6. Six and six? Yeah, it was bad. I still got a friend. So I got one of my good friends. He was a senior when I was a freshman. He, he man, I love my guy, Mike Dean. MD called me. CD, you got to go to see him. We're 5-0. and oh. Well, we're 6-0. and oh. We were playing on high. You got to go, man. We, this is our year, bro. We, you. So I went to Champaign. <laughs> I went to the Ohio State game when we were 6-0. and We got the hell beat out of us. MD called me on the road base. He said, man, I'm sorry. I apologize, bro. He still apologizes to me to this day. He said, man, I didn't know we were going to be that yeah, bad. Reality's the worst. It really <laughs> is. We were excited. I was excited. He, yeah. I had no intent. MD, you got to go. You, he, said, he's, he lives in Georgia. You got to go. You can't miss this. I go. We end up 6-6. Six and six, And, uh. He still owes me dinner. Well, did it make you be, about as yeah. sick as Rock's going to feel after eating that whole cookie cake Good tonight? Uh, yeah. yeah. Can I, Carrie, can uh, I ask you one more question? Sure. Week nine, they face off against number one, Georgia. Do they have one starting quarterback going into that game? Yes. yes. It has to, okay, they so might, it's happening they, between those two. No, yeah. The one that has survived. Maybe the Miami guy, right? <laughs> that's what that's, it's going to feel that's what like. I'm, thinking. That's, yep. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're know. right. You're 100% right. There you go. So, my last thing was going to be 90. Uh, SEC Network tonight? SEC Network tonight, yes. 99% of the public money is on the Mizzou over for the year. Uh, I'm part of that. Should I be worried about my bet? No, they're, they're going to go 9-3. and three. All right. So are, they, they, are they five and a half? I hope, they, and a half. I hope, I hope they do well. I don't I think that they no, probably do a bowl No, game. I mean it. I, I, They'll yeah. qualify for a bowl game. Loop is my don't, guy. No, yeah. see, I don't like Coach what we're Loop doing here. What's no, no, wrong with bowl games? No. What's wrong with bowl games? Bowl games don't, it, it's bowl meaningless. Bowl games don't count if they, you win they, six games. I bowl games are. are meaningless. Hey, you should not be allowed to be in a bowl game that. if you're six Get and six. Eli Drinkwitz, oh, the first Mizzou coach since Warren Powers to achieve bowl status in each of his first three seasons. You don't believe it? Ask Eli. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you I, can. Uh, if, if we can still be, we go to bowl games around here, or we could raise the bar and be, we win nine games a year around here. We could change. We could change about, that, but apparently no one wants to. Apparently, it's we go to bowl yeah. games around You're here. In the Rock. SEC. Good Rock. luck. Right. Be reasonable now. I'm trying to have. I'm trying to have a little bit of. <laughs> it a little matter. bit of juice. Look at the shirt I'm wearing. Rock. I do I know. It doesn't matter. No. Can't it though? It doesn't. Sustainability. Win. Hope. Where. How. At some point, it will happen.
We'll be around to see it. Yeah. We'll, we'll be around, around to see it. it. No, we'll be around to see it. And we got to get running here, but the teams that are at the top of the college football food chain have been there for a hundred years. They have and that's not going to change. It's probably Alabama not. almost fell off in like 2005. And then they came for one back. season. They, <laughs> Ohio State had their little moment. Michigan had their they're little gonna get, moment. They're going to get playoffs it's like a flash because of the NCAA restrictions. Texas has had their little moment. And Mizzou. They're not going to survive. Their little the moment. SEC. Uh, very little. We're, we're the hoping. only team. we got to keep hope alive. There's two schools that have been able to infiltrate the the, the blue bloods uh oregon because mm-hmm. of their money yep and miami because of uh who is miami luke, uh, anyway. uh luther uh two live crew guy oh oh uh that, that's <laughs> I say luther Pandros. yeah no <laughs> Uncle <That's Luke>. <laughs> yeah. so anyway Uncle luke. <laughs> it ain't happening for uh, uh mizzou can be very good but they're never going to be with alabama they're never going to be with georgia they're never going to be with texas mm. it's just not going to happen I'm, uh, i apologize for that reality Happy game day. Eight, eight wins a year? <laughs> <laughs> Not eight wins a year. But if we get to Seven? eight wins a year, everybody... You can get, if, you if can we get win, an eight win yeah. or a ten win season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can get... It, with, yeah. Yes. Pinkle had them at eight a year. If you, you can get, get to eight, 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 eight a year, you should be thrilled. Seven and five, eight and four. Season. Right? Seven and five, That's eight and four, they should be thrilled. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Great job today by our producer, audio engineer, the dreaming Matthew Rocchio. I can live with eight. It's a pleasure. Oh, that's pleasure. Great. Then you that's see, great. the thing is, you get to eight, then you say, "Oh, we should win nine. Yep. You get to nine. Oh, we should win ten. Yep. Right? It is. Uh, Brooke, this was fun. Yes, How about was. that? Check your house. Oh, 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> stay in the house. I'm gonna stay in the house. Yeah, good idea. I'm gonna stay in the house. Good idea. <laughs> CD. Show us your face. We want to see your face. Who said that? You want to see my face? Thank you for tuning in, texting in, and being a part of the show for all of us until tomorrow morning at seven. Have a great Friday Eve, everyone. That's right.